Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of the Daryl Holmes campaign. I can't believe it's already been 14 episodes of this. So I am Tyler, your humble dungeon master, and with me here is the crew. Now, you've noticed that we are missing one Mike who plays Rico in the party, but unfortunately, Mike dropped out of the campaign for personal reasons, and he wanted me to let the audience know that he enjoyed playing and he wished everyone else luck on the rest of the campaign. Um, with that further ado, let's start out from the top of the order. So let's start out via Discord. Hi, I'm Axius. I'm playing Axius. Uh, T-Flu. <laughs> Axius. Play play Axius. All right. Uh, next one down. I'm Matt. I'm playing Blue, the Dragonborn clunk cleric monk. Do it again. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, hi, my name is Justin. I am playing Koto Shoshu, who is also a monk. He's a human. <laughs> and our final player of the evening. Hi, I'm Bob. I'm playing Ichabod Iron Eyes, who's a fighter slash rogue half elf. All right, and without further ado, let's continue where we left off in the middle of combat. As the music plays. All right. So let's recap what happened. You guys were split, and you guys, for the most part, discovered the nature in your own creative ways of the three skulls and whatever plans that Black has been up to. With Koto being newly clothed, well fed, and promised gold by the wizard, um, he accepted the quest and joined up with Bob, Amrin, and Anea, who were basically trying to find Axius and crew. And Axius making a deal with Asmodeus himself was granted new power and him showing his new power in combat as they rolled a one on their encounters list and they've encountered some drow who kidnapped um, at the moment Blue and Ichabod into their church. And in the meantime, Koto is sharpshooting from 200 feet away, and Axius and Amrin are currently unconscious, with Anea being really the only active member of the party who is able to do anything. And Rico was hogtied and trying to free himself. Koto, from your perception, and while you're trying to game aim at the remaining drow that you're able to see who is right next to Rico, you see in the sky. Now, the sky right now is slowly turning to a bright gray for sunlight hasn't been seen in two years. But as this bright gray is starting to form, which signifies daylight, you just see a giant wingspan that spans throughout across the entire area that you are seeing. And it is in the shape of a giant bird. And what you see coming down through the clouds is a giant rock coming from the sky. And you just see this bird just go to the ground and with its giant claw, grab a piece of earth and fl fly away. I will, if you want, you can make a perception check to see what it grabbed. Seventeen. You squint your eyes closer, and on that piece of earth, you just see Rico, who is clearly hanging by the thread, along with the drow on the opposite end. And you just see this giant bird-sized bird just fly away. What do you do? No, wait. Please, come back. <laughs> so, the remaining drow out there on the field, and the remaining he party members... Yeah, so you see this drow being carried along with Rico by this giant rock. Yeah, I'm not going to fire arrows at the ginormous <laughs> bird. It's right. just dumb. But that, so that being said, the only party, the only thing that you see with your high perception is Anea, who is at this point going to Axius and Amran, who are knocked unconscious um, via drow poison. 
And other than that, you do know that two of your party members were carried out to the church Blue that was nearby. Blue and Ichabod really. took off. Yep. Um, okay. So is there any other drow down there besides nope. them? Nope. Okay. As far I'm as you can see, there's start, no enemies. I'm going to slowly start making my way down that way, but I don't trust the area, so I'm going to stealth it. Okay, make a stealth check. Yeah, 14. Okay, you are stealthy. All right, Axius, first things first. Something I forgot to mention to you last session, that you were hit with a critical hit, so you have one level of exhaustion. Yeah, I'm, yeah I, always, I remember yep. this exhaustion. But, yeah, I forgot, but you rolled high on your roll, so it doesn't matter. Um, you just see nothing but blackness. You feel like you're asleep, but you're also kind of half awake. It's not until Anaya wakes you up that you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on, and you just see a giant crater that is just nearby you. <sighs> what happened? Tell me everything. Uh, well, I was trying to f trying to defeat some drow, and then all of a sudden, this giant bird came and took Rico away. Wait, what? Rico? He didn't look, go inside the no church. There's no time. Look, 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 he wasn't taken to the church. He kicked himself off a drow, or whoever these people are, and then a giant bird came and just picked Rico up. Okay, now, okay. look, we got to we gotta save the others. Ichabod and Blue, they were carried away to that church, and she points to the church that is nearby the giant lake. All right, I'm going to lay on hands myself for 20 hit points sure. first. Sure. Uh, so that is 20 hit points back. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also going to go to Amrin and lay on hands the remaining five I have to wake her up, at least. Okay. Okay. Oops. You wake her up easily, and you heal her for how much? Five? Yeah, five. Just that's all I have okay. left. Um, okay, she wakes up. And I look at her, I look at her name as like, oh, do you have any potions? Do you have any health potions? No, I, I don't. Amrin, like, goes through her, she's like, Ugh. she's like kind of banged up a bit. Uh, that slash mark is like right across like her arm and her shoulder area, yeah. and she's like digging through her bag, and she says, "Well, I only have one potion here." And like she looks at her cut, and then she looks at your wound. She's like, "What happened?" We will discuss this later. as she sees your later. new appearance later. Here, just take this, so she gives you a potion of healing. Perfect. I take that too. All right, you roll for that. At this uh, point, Koto, you have caught up with them. <laughs> how much is it? Uh, it's two d four plus four. Two d four. Got it. Yep. If I've caught up, I'm gonna kneel out fifty feet from them. I still got an arrow notched. Mm -hmm. I'm just scanning all around the church. Basically, I, I see that they're trying to heal each other and patch each other up, right? So they're not yep. really paying attention. I'm basically Looking, I'm basically, I'm trying to keep eyes around us, so at least one person is doing Overwatch. Okay, so you're doing Overwatch, you're surveying the area with your perception. You could clearly see that there are no enemies nearby. However, you do see something huge coming out of the lake as you're kind of surveying the area. So, nearby this church is, let me just go to my notes here is specifically the Lonely Moor. Now, since you're local to the area, Kodo, you know that the Lonely Moor is just a big lake. And there are rumors of, like, you know, children's stories of monsters. But then you just see something huge just coming out of the water with three glowing red eyes coming from the surface of the water. As you are about halfway to the church, which is about roughly 50 feet. and But you do see something large coming from the rear end of the church based on your position. But as far as sight... At the moment, the thing is currently half cover as it slowly comes out of the water and into the church. I would do a, a whistle. What? Try and make it sound like a songbird. Sure. And I I focus on my eyes and I point towards the lake past their shoulder okay. as near the okay. church. At this point, Axios, as you are healing up and such, you, Anea, and Amran all hear this whisper you see Kodo and then you see like towards the rear end of the church and you see something large coming out of it from your point of view it's about three quarters cover alright I'm gonna run over to Kodo okay 
Kodo, Kodo, what the what the fuck is going on? Where the hell have you been? You see Axes and he looks completely different. He looks more fiendish than the last time you saw him. I've been on top of hill. <laughs> okay, okay. Shooting. Okay. okay, listen, listen. Do you have anything that can heal me? I'll go in and you stay out here and provide cover. I reach in my bag. I pull out one of my chicken rations. <laughs> I kind of give you the squint. You owe me. And I give you the chicken ration. I, I, I horse it down. You horse it down. Roll 1d4 and you remove one level of exhaustion. As, as you eat yep. this chicken, it's the best chicken you've eaten ever in your life. But more than that, you feel some magical essence go through you. You get the feeling this might have some kind of magic in this food. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Anaya, you stay here with him, and you provide Shh, cover as well. Don't tell everyone about chicken. Shh, I didn't say anything. <laughs> Anaya, Ch chicken. Come here. All right, she, at, at this point, Amran and Anaya go to you. All right, Anaya, you stay here and provide cover with the arrows. Amran, let's go. And I start heading to the church. All right. Now, are you sneak, trying to sneak your way to the church, or are you just running straight towards it? I'll sneak to the church. Make a stealth check. Amrin will... Let me see if there's anything she can do. No, she can't help. Is there any way that I can provide assistance with this stealth check since I'm doing Overwatch? Uh, No, unfortunately not. You're just providing cover. It doesn't necessarily help them sneak in better. Ah, um, oh, nine. Well, I can tell them, you know, shh. <laughs> sure, I'll allow it. So she rolled a fourteen. I get to reroll. I get to reroll re that. You roll your stealth. Okay. Yeah. He's helping you. Yeah. This point. basically We're guiding you guys yeah. on how to Seven stealth. Two? Yeah, that's better. You you are stealthy. So you and Amran sneak your way up while Anea prepared to knock her arrows. Koto, you look at Anea, you know that she's not an expert. If anything, she's more of a not a complete noob, but you could tell, like, she at least has some basic idea of how to use a bow and arrow. That she's trying to notch her arrow with her short bow. Yeah, I murmur a cuss and call her a rookie and elvish. <laughs> with her short bow and regular arrows. She says, what? Be quiet. Okay. She tries to take aim. All right, so we go how, to the how church. How far away is the church from me? Or is the church within 600 feet? It's, or do for, I have to it's 40 to feet. feet. It's, it's 40, 40 feet. feet. Yeah, it's 40 feet. So let me just put your tokens on the board right now. Can so, I also use Carnage Divine Power to regain a second level slot? Sure, I'll allow it. So Koto will say that you and Anae are like here. Um, you're not this okay. close, but you're about 40, 50 feet away. And I'll just put Anae right next to you. Oop. Um, actually, let me just position you right here because you could see it with that. at this point as you as you like like discussing positions or whatever. This creature has mm -hmm. gone halfway into the building. Uh, and then let me just put Aaron. So you so Koto, you're fifty feet away. You're just off the board, so that's not accurate. But you're fifty feet away. So Axius and right. Aaron will be placed here as you are stealthy. Um, you. Obviously, no one knows. You guys get the idea there's drow inside, but you don't know exactly how many and who know. You just know that two male drow just came in here. Meanwhile, back at the church, last time we left off, Blue did a breath weapon attack against the priest, and you see a tentacle pop out of the lake. As far as Ichabod and Blue's situation is concerned, both of you are currently restrained with chains chained to an altar, and you have none of your guys' stuff. That being said, coming out of the lake, you see three glowing, well, it seems to be three glowing red eyes, but as this creature starts to emerge from the lake, you see that this creature is a, gi a huge octopus. Not a giant, but a huge octopus, as it uses all of its movement to get out of the lake. Um, half of its body is inside the church. The, as far as the church size is concerned, it's about 20 feet tall, with obviously each square representing five feet. So this whole creature is taking up this whole big hole opening 
at the side of the church. It's taking up the whole its whole space. And you see that it is covered in some weird plate armor. And you see like what you thought was three eyes is really just two of its giant eyes with some headpiece around it with a glowing red gem over it. And it is glowing along with its red eyes. And the last time we left off, the priestess who recently got electrified says you will be the first one to be offered to the eight-legged beast. And it is at this point we go to official initiative, which this beast goes last. It will spend its one attack to grab you. So I need you to make a strength check with disadvantage, Blue, and I need to make a strength check for this creature. Well, I think I'm going to end up dying tonight. <laughs> Because my oh, no. just hate me. Damn. <laughs> Rolled a roll? 13 and a 1. Ooh, natural 1. Let me see. Watch him roll a natural 1. Yeah, it's going to make it. Uh, so it clearly grabs you, and you see this octopus tentacle just wrap its, it completely around you and just pulls you off of this altar. You are currently even more restrained, if not anything. So you have the restraint condition on you. And it's going to spend its turn there because it's spent all of its movement getting up to you. Now we go to the top of the initiative, which Axius, you just hear a big light electrocute lightning, some weird elvish talk, and then some squishy, smashy sounds. But you and Amran are stealth. What would you, you and Amran like to do? This is not good. This is. I wasn't. Ex uh, so we're down here at the bottom of the board, right? Yes, that's where you and Amran currently are. Are there any windows in this church, or is the only entrance to... There the are left? window. So you have the entrance here. Mm. You do see a window here, even though the map doesn't show accurate. So you see a window here and here, and then you'd also see a window here as well. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to stealthily go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then use my action to dash... Five, ten, fifty. Whoops, I lost my token. <laughs> oh, oh uh, no. Yeah. So essentially, I'm just like... going to the window that's in between the two draw, draw soldiers. So, down so here. you're going right here? Yeah. Make a stealth check for me? Yep. Oh, fuck. Uh, seven. Oof. That's right. So, what you see through this window is these four male drow, which are just standing in guard position. You see also four female drow to the right wearing better studded leather armor, clearly having better weaponry on them, along with hand crossbows and short swords. You do see this weird priestess chick in the corner holding what seems like to be some kind of flog or flail on her hip. And you also see this giant octopus just grab blue. And you see Ichabod change to the altar. It is, at this point, as you pierce through your head, you being very fiendish, this drow over here takes a look, and she goes, ah! And then she notices you. And this gets everyone's attention. And she sees a fucking devil through the window. Okay, perfect. I am going to use my bonus action to misty step to the other window. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And stealth again. Which one? This one right over here on this side. Okay. Make a stealth check. I'll make a perception <laughs> check for them. What 18. You <laughs> what you roll? 18. Okay. Let me make a perception check for them. I'm going to be doing off the rolls of Aaron's character sheet just so that it'll be more easier for me. So I'll just roll d 20 here for all of them. You vanish. They don't seem to spot you, but they seem to be more alert. Is that going to be hit? That's all I got. That's all okay. I got. <laughs> Amron, Amron sees all this, and if you could hear a sigh, you would. Um, let me just look at her stuff. Uh, she's still currently stealth. Do, 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 do. She will cast Disguise Self on herself. She's being clever with this. She runs to the door. 
foam kicks through the door, and I'll just see her languages a bit. Okay. I forgot to give her a language, so I'll give her Elvish. Um, so she says some mumbo jumbo in Elvish, which seems to get all these drow's attention. Uh, let me just make a deception check for her. She's going to spend her turn just trying to deceive these drow. Not bad. Not bad, 17. They, at least the male drow, are worried. So she... What's funny is that if it were... If Koda were to hear this... Actually, no, Ichabod, you're there. You just see this weird drow come in, say that there's a demon outside, trying to hunt them down, and along with their comrades, and that they should probably check on the north side, which is up at this point. Why is there fancy music playing? I'm skipping this. Oh, wait, no. This is changing. Okay, never mind. We're safe. So she convinces four of these drow to go this way, and the drow are going to spend their turn going that way. And as you, you, got, you see, Axius, that as they leave, they turn invisible as soon as they leave the entrance. All right. And then she's going to just basically spend her turn there as a male drow. Next to the initiative would be Anea. She doesn't see anyone come out, so she's going to hold it an attack action. Drow's turn. This female priestess will go around here to Ichabod. And by the way, you're, I'm just going to attach you to the creature. Uh, she goes to you, Ichabod, and she says to you, Elvish, any last words, darling, before you're the next one to be given to our great feast? I want to see if your god dies from me eating on a person infected with this disease. <laughs> <laughs> As if you don't think I thought of that beforehand. And she'll hold an action for something. The female drow are worried, so they will look all over the place and will be. And you see, Axios, that these drow, drow women, they're just climbing on walls as if they're walking on them and like they're staying in place. As they are like investigating these, this 20 foot building, trying to see. Oh, I don't want to make this drow big. I just want to move it. Okay, it's not like moving. Okay. So at this point, these two are going to look over here. This one's going to look out the window, trying to spot you. She's going to make a perception check. Do, 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 do. Patient, everyone. I'm switching tabs quickly and such. Perception check for the draw. Let's see what's the option for this. Okay, so with a 21. Uh, what is your stealth modifier, Kodo? Five. Five? All right. So with a 21, this female drow that was once spooked from Axius' appearance looks out the window and she kind of sees something in Elvish. Ichabod, you hear hear um this female drow saying i think there might be something out there maybe we should go check that way and that's what they'll do so that's what they're gonna do and the other drow are gonna hold actions and being prepared to attack with their hand crossbows next of the initiative would be koto make a perception check Twelve. Twelve? Alright, so let me just see. You kind of squint your eye. You see a figure in what seems like to be in one of the, the windows, but you can't quite tell who it is. But this figure seems to look outside the window as if it's looking for something. But you do detect movement in there, especially since you saw all of a sudden Aaron turning into a drow going in into the entryway. So what do you do? You're stealth at the moment, so... I'm going to tap Anea and make the hand gesture that I'm going to go around the back of the temple. 
I'm going to okay. point to her to stay here and be stealthy. Okay. I'm going to point my fingers to her to be looking out the back and to be looking at the windows. I hold up a hand okay. and I point towards the window where I see the female drill right now. Then I'm going to start right. making my movement around the back. All right. I would like for you to make a survival check for me to see if she understands all of that. Thirteen. Okay, you'll find out later. So now you okay, now you humans. say you would like to move. <laughs> you say you would like to move. Yes. Yes. Um, to stay stealth, I'm gonna have to do half half movement. If you would like to, yes. Otherwise, you could move at yeah. regular speed, but you would have to make another stealth check, as you are aware that they're probably alarmed. Yeah, I'm going to stay stealth and make half movement. Okay, so you get 20 feet, so you're almost off the board. That'd be 20. Okay. So we'll say you move in this general direction going forward. All right, so that's 20. Would you like to do anything else? At this point, you see the most of the... At this point, you still see the creature kind of half cover, but you do see what seems like to be forms of what seems like to be a giant weird octopus. It's a creature you've never seen before. You still has cover? Half cover at this point, based on your point of view, because you are a bit further away. Right. I'm going to sit there and pull up uh, my dodge action and just stay in defense mode until I can move okay. up to get a better shot on that creature. Okay. Blue, you are wrapped up in this tentacle. It's very weird, and you are restrained. And you see this octopus is like wearing some headpiece and it's covered in armor, you get the feeling that this is not like your ordinary octopus, especially one this huge. That being said, what would you like to do? Uh, how do I try and wiggle out of its grab? You would have to make a strength contest against a huge octopus, and that would take up your action. A disadvantage, or...? Just regular to check. Okay, 13. 13, let me roll for the creature. We're just going to roll off of Amaranth's character. She is a lot easier for me. Boom, boom, boom. Let me check the stats. It rolled a 7. And what'd you roll? 13 total. 13. It rolled a 10. So you are able to wiggle yourself through the slippery crevices of this tentacle as you just plop out to the ground. So you are in front of this creature now. Am I standing or am I prone? You're standing. You're okay. you can you're a monk, so you're a manager to stand up. <laughs> okay. And let's see, what was my move speed again? So that costs us your action. Yes. Let's see. Using my last key point, I bolt right outside the door. Okay. As you bolt outside of the door, before you can move, the drow priestess will use her hulled action to cast web on you. I would like for you to make a... Let's see here. I'll tell you what you Where is web? Here it is. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Twelve. Twelve. Unfortunately, it does not beat her DC. So you are. I just move your to token here. So you get up to here, and she casts web. Web. All of a sudden, you just see her hands just spray this web, kind of like Spider-Man would, and it just covers that entire area. I just need to see what area of effect this is. 
Oh, that should be 20 foot area. Okay, so. Let me get my draw tool here. So this entire area is just covered in web. And for web, what happens is, I think you, I don't think it hurts you too bad. I think it just slows you down a lot. As I click on this spell here. Sorry it's taking a while, folks. It's just that I'm switching over a lot of tabs and a lot of stuff. All right, so the webs are considered difficult terrain. And it is not anchored at the moment. Each creature that starts to turn to web unless they get Okay. Each creature. Yep, so you are stuck there, unfortunately. So you're stuck there as you try to attempt to move. This web appears, and you're just stuck there for the turn. Okay, and I assume I still have my key point. Yeah. We could say before you commit to further key points that you just use your regular movement. All right, that is my go. You don't want to take. You don't want to do anything bonus action wise or not. There's nothing I can do for my bonus action. It's all, all combat right. orient. Ekabod says, "Excuse me, not Ekabod. The drow priest says to Ekabod, "Looks like your friend's not going anywhere. It looks like he'll be thieving to the great feast." And at this point, it is Ichabod's turn. You are currently changed up, and this priestess woman just cast a web, and your friend Blue is covered in this web. What would you like to do? What you doing, Ichabod? Can I do a straight check to see if I break my bonds? Sure. You can make a strength check. Athletics. Uh, strength check. Six. You're trying really hard to try to get out of those chains, but unfortunately the binds are too strong for you. Uh... I try to... Tell her I was once bit, and I know how to cure this. <laughs> All right. She says, and that concerns me why. Because it might save your fucking life once you're stupid. <laughs> and then I trail <laughs> off. Or I say some dirty word in Dorvish. Sure. <laughs> All right. Is that going to be your turn? Yeah. The creatures go. That's its movement for the turn. It will grab you. I need you to make a... I'll give you the choice of either making a strength check, Blue, in order to dodge the contest, or attempt to make a dex check. However, if you make the dex check, you'll be at disadvantage because it's the web. So which one would you like to choose? A dex check, or what was the other one? So you can make a regular strength check, or you can take a dex check with disadvantage because you're covered in web. I'll just go with the strength check. Okay. I wish you luck. Ooh. That's a total of 17. It rolled a 17 as well. So what happens is that this tentacle tries to go after you, but you just barely dodge out of the way as it doesn't seem to, as it seems to wiggle around in hesitation. It seems like. It was like hesitating grabbing you, and then it tried to, and that point you dodged it out of the way, even with your webbing. All right, so that will be the creature's go. Can't really do much. Axius, you're currently stealth. You see all this going on. What would you like to do? Oh, uh, dang it, dang it. Oh, oh, fudge cakes. Let's see. Why are we always outnumbered in these fights? Ah, uh, let's see. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30... If I jump through this, if I jump through this mirror uh, window and then take my movement, I would land here at 30 feet, right? So, so keep in mind, Webb is still around that proximity. You would have to make a check to see if you could get through it or not. Can I, there's not a way to get around it then. All right. It's covering that whole area. 
Alright, so I'm just gonna stealthily hide behind one of these pews right over here. I did forget to mention that while she casted web, she is holding what seems like to be a white glow in her hand, signifying that she's concentrating on it. That I forgot to mention, my apologies, but other than that, you crash through the window. At this point, all the female drow, like, turn around and, like, point at you, Axios. They seem to all four of them have eyes on you. What would, what would you like to do? I'm going to cast Darkness right on me. All right. <laughs> a black orb surrounds you, and all of a sudden, for them, it seems like they're fish. And Ichabod, you hear them saying, Where did it go? Where did it go? I don't know. It seems to vanish. Find him. You do know that Axios is probably hidden himself in some way. But as far as you know, the female drow do not know. But Axios, you are hidden it's... in this darkness. Alright, and then... Uh, so since, all you now. <laughs> since I haven't used all my movement and darkness will still cover me, I'm going to hop this pew very stealthily and land here. What's the radius of darkness? Uh, uh good question. Let's see. So it is a 15 foot radius. 5, 10, 15, so it'll get that. Bingo. Yep. So I literally moved one space from where they saw me before, and that's my turn. Okay. Amarin, seeing this, she will try to deceive and pretend to look all over the place for the weird demon that just came out of nowhere. She has to make a performance check because she's trying to put on a show. That's a nat one. Oh no. So, here's what happens. She is walking around. By the time she gets to this darkness point, she trips. Pfft. Actually, as you turn around, she accidentally drops her form. But you know that she's safe in this darkness. However, because of it, she enters your space. And the drow notice that something weird is around there. So at that point, Amrin will stay in Drow, which you can't understand. But Ichabod, you hear what seems like to be a weird mixture of a female male voice saying, she will the nap one. She says, help! I think I fall into some weird area. I don't know. Like, she's like badly protecting this cover up, this fuck up. Um, and you do know that something is weird with that drow. Amrin will, uh, that, well, you are there, Axis. Would you like to do anything as your wife trips over herself? Can I do anything? What would you like, do you, would you like to say anything as you see this and you can tell like her deception is clearly not working? I mean, she's like currently nobody without true sight or blind sight could see in this, in this thing, so. I'm gonna remain quiet. Hopefully All right. she does the same. Alright. She will come up to you and whisper to you, what's the plan? In, in Inferno, of course. We're gonna try to knock the ruby off that damn octopus. Say again, I didn't hear you. Seriously, my apologies. Sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna knock the ruby off that damn octopus. Alright. Uh, let me just look at her character sheet. Do you need cover? Yes. Alright, she'll cast Fog Cloud. Using her last spell slot. She creates a 20 foot radius. She says, where do you want me to put it? As close to the octopus as you can. Alright, let me just create another drawing here. This The color of this will be light. The fog. So she can basically get this whole area. <laughs> All of a sudden, Blue and Ichabod, random fog just appears out of nowhere and it's taking up this whole vicinity. And your vision is heavily obscured in this complete area. She says, that should bring you some time, darling. They, There's web in front of you, so just go around it. Use my tail to slap her butt. <laughs> she uses her tail to slap, slap her butt. Slap your butt, excuse me. Alright, so that's her turn. And Aya. Uh, let's see. 
And Ao will kind of like half follow you to try to get a better position and try to aim at the drow female that she clearly sees at the window. It's like she's like a little back behind you, Koto. So she would be like right here. Uh, she's giving you the look of, hey, you want me to take the shot? All right. She'll make an attack roll, which is a plus two with her short bow, which she has. Well, the drow's not looking this way, so she would have advantage, wouldn't she? She is stealth, so yes, she'll have advantage. No, I don't want to choose. You said that you. all the drows turn their attention. Yeah. To yes. Right and here. you are and you are stealth as well, so that. Too. Yeah. So, so she doesn't see us at all. We're all stealth. Then Anaya would get it. Yeah, that's a 19. That's high. See if she, she. Oh wait, she crits on a 19. I forgot about that. So. Because of her improved critical. Uh, because of her level up game. Alright, so it's a grand total of 6 plus her dex, which is just a regular zero modifier. So it's 6 plus an additional d6 for critical hits. Yes, yeah, she deals almost max damage at 11 points of damage. This female drow, all of a sudden, um, actually, is, can you see out of darkness? Just to clarify. Yes, with only right. with my only with my blind sight, so only ten feet off from me. All right, uh, you just feel that a body nearby you collapses to the floor in grieving pain. Seems to be choking on her own blood. Seems like she got she's in great pain further away. The drow woman that you saw earlier that was peeking out through the window that you were at. So you're like, yeah, she's probably suffering right now. It's pretty good. All right. That's Anaya's turn. It's the Drow's turn. They will investigate further into this vicinity and will kind of hesitate. This female Drow will go up to her comrade. She, this female priestess, will go up to her female comrade and cast cure wounds on her. Her. In which... Did she walk through the webs? No. This female woman who was like right here, she just climbs and circles around because she was on the ceiling and she hops oh. down. And right. this one right next to you, which is just outside of the cloud vicinity, goes over to here, heals her for cure wounds. All right. At that point, it is. So these three are gonna make these two are gonna make investigation checks to see what the hell's going on. What's the modifiers? Yeah, they're they don't know what the hell is going on. Um at this point the male drow have all vanished. Alright man walking off on the job. <laughs> Koto, you're up. You you definitely tell that Anaya took a really good shot at her. Um, Do I see this one? No. But what would you like There's to no do? There's no windows over here at shot. all? You, no. They, you do not, again, the windows that you see are this one here. And there's one over here as well. And then obviously this whole back part's just blown out. Okay. I'm going to continue. If I see they're all distracted, I'm going to do a 40 foot of movement. Then make a stealth check when I get around here. All right. Move your token. So 20 feet will put you on the board. All right. There you are. You are finally on the board. Um, stealth check. Stealth check. 16. You are stealthy at the moment. I'm going to... And I see this big old octopus, right? Trying to go for Ichabod? The, the octopus is currently inside the building. You would have to position this yourself back to part, where you can... This back part's not blown out? This part is. Basically, uh, this whole part is. So you would have to position yourself in a way where you could do it. But at the moment, you are stealth. But you do see smoke coming out of it, which 
is quite weird. It's drow. Enough said. If I can't do anything, then that's my turn. You can still move around and it's stuff really, if you wish to. I can't. That's my full movement, and I'm still... This map Even with is... your key points? I don't want to use them. I'm about to go ah, into combat. This, right. this map <laughs> is a little... This... I mean, you really can't tell where the windows are. You can't tell which part is blown yeah, out, understand. which part is an actual right, wall. Right, I understand. So to clarify, as far as blown out parts, as far as this big hole, it's this area, general vicinity here. As far as windows, there are no windows at this side, but you do know there's opposite windows over here, 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 and here. That being said, would you like to do anything else? Yeah. Is it? Okay. Blue, you're covering in web, and all of a sudden there's a big fog cloud all around you. What would you like to do? I want to try and get out of the webs, for starters. All right, all right, so let me just read webs real quick to see what kind of check you have to make. Web. You would have to make... You would have to make a dexterity, another dexterity saving throw to see if you're able to move. So we get deck safe. That's gonna be eleven. Eleven. Let me just see here. I doubt that's gonna save since I failed on a twelve. No, it's not gonna save. You're stuck there. Even with this fog, like you can't see anything. You're covered in this web. You're basically like dying on death's door. You don't know what's going on. Would you like to do anything while you are remaining in place? Nope, there is nothing else I can do. Alrighty. Ichabod, you're still changed, and all of a sudden this weird cloud appears out of nowhere. What would you like to do? Now, am I chained to the altar, or am I chained yes. laying on the altar? You are chained to the altar with your hands bound. What would you like to do? Try to break the chains again. All right, make a strength check. Being a blacksmith, would I add that? No. Add anything? Not nope. looking for the weakest link or feeling for it? I would say maybe... Well, let, let me see. Let me just check the stats. Before you make any checks here we'll say make a history check actually no make an intelligence check to see like if you know what kind of lock this is or if you can tell whether it's good or bad or what have you 19 yeah these are not the highest quality but they're basically average average shackles um, you basically have to force your way out of this. So that being said, you could attempt to make a strength check if you desire to. Alright. Eight. You're trying really, really hard, but unfortunately you're just not able to pull... These are like really tough shackles as your wrist starts to form bruises and such from the wrists as you're continuously trying to pull from the altar as smoke billows around you with the sounds of the creature nearby you. Anything else? Any way I can make a move to like... Where is it at? Try to like slide down to there or am I too... You are currently restrained so like these chains are putting you in place. Yeah, right. I'm done then. Creature's turn. Uh, let me just roll this here. Let me roll this secretly. So, this creature will, seeing the cloud form out of nowhere, will instinctively do a black ink cloud. So there's more 
ink all over the place as it freaks out. And it will move. At this point, Koto, you see this giant octopus slowly retreating into the lake as this smoke appears. And all of a sudden, this white smoke is turning into like this weird black smoke. And then it's just coming out of the thing. And it'll use its full movement to try to get into the lake. And that'll be its action for the turn. Uh, next, it is Axios' turn. You are covered in darkness. And you sense that the creature that was there is starting to retreat. What would you like to do? Can I cut the webs that Blue is um, trapped in? Alright, so you peek out. I'm assuming not in the webbing, right? No, I have... Uh, my halberd is a 10-foot range. I thought I could be able to reach him. Yeah, if you want, you can attack the web. Yeah, let's cut him out. I could see him. Okay. Alright, make an attack roll against the web. Oh my god, 12? 12? Yeah, that hits web. So there's nothing to worry about. Blue, all of a sudden you see this weird halberd just coming out of nowhere, just loosening your binds. So your area specifically is currently not covered in web. I have two attack actions. Can I use the second attack to cut the uh, uh, my way towards Ichabod through that web as well? Um... What's the range of that? 10 feet? Yeah. I would say you would have to move in a certain way to where you could try to get to Ichabod at the moment. You sense Ichabod's there and he might be in trouble, especially since he feels struggles, signs of struggling as can he I is use, dying. Can I use my 20 foot dagger to sort of slice the webbing along the path? You could. So, darkness, you can see out of it, yes? Just to clarify. 10 feet out, yes. So, you could throw the dagger in the general vicinity of Ichabod, and with the combination of that and your blind sets, you, there is a possible way of doing it. Um, okay. But you would have to make a very high attack roll, though. Alright, let's do it. Let's try. Ugh, so, uh, 15? 15. Ichabod, you just feel a dagger just pierce at the chain. And you see that the chain that not you not only do you see a dagger drop nearby you, but you also Who's the one attached to the rope to my. To my oh, you're attached to the rope. Yeah. So you you hit chain. You know that like ting. And you see the dagger attached to some rope nearby you. Okay. My turn again, or. Um. We'll, we'll see what happens in the future. But that's the current situation. Do you want to do anything else, Axios? Um, I can't hold my movement, so I think... No, I think that's my turn. Okay. Amrin will... Let me just read her stuff here. Okay, so with that, she will warp, move towards between you and Blue, and she will guide Blue out of the webbing. So she says, "Come!" You got, she says, "Come! We gotta get out of here quickly, further down." Is she? Do you allow her to drag you? Yes. All right. With the rest of her. Head. <laughs> Right. Boop. You are now inside the safe space and you see Axius. However, he looks more fiendish than the last time you saw him. And you see Axius blue, which is just looks like hell. Especially with a bunch of bike marks all over him and such. I can see in darkness? You can see out of this space. Okay. So you two see each other's looking quite different. Some scrolls. Alright. So, Aeneas' turn. She will change positions. And she'll half yell, half. Actually, let me just make a self check for her just to see if she yells at you quietly. Yeah. She says to you, Kuro, 
Should I take the shot? And she points at the octopus that is appearing out. There are no. What should hold I do? Your shot. Hold, hold your She'll shot. Hold the Follow shot. me. Okay. She'll hold a action to shoot. But she wasn't doing it quietly, unfortunately. Um, Drow's turn. This Drow will look outside the window. We'll see an air and we'll take the shot. They get Oh, it's... as soon as that Drow looks out the window, since Anea is holding her action, she'll be able yep. to shoot the Drow, right? Yep. Yep. They will attack each other. So let me just see here. I just need to... I'm just looking at stats for both. So we'll do Anea first. Because she was first on initiative before them. That will hit her. And because this drow came last initiative, she doesn't have time to react. Though she takes five points of piercing damage as another arrow goes right to her. She's like, ah! She then points her hand crossbow and will shoot at Anaya with a plus six to. Is it plus six or plus seven? It's a plus seven to hit. So a d20 plus seven. Angel that will miss. The hand crossbow. Yep, she... Say again, I'm sorry. What's the range of that hand crossbow? Hand crossbow is... 30 to 120 feet. I see, okay. Okay, second attack against her. She uses her bonus action to load it. That will hit Anea. And they will take seven points of piercing damage. First, they have three hit. attacks. They get she gets two because she basically had to use. She gets two attacks. She used her bonus action to reload, so she used her second attack to shoot, which hits. And the damage was seven. seven. Okay. Yep. So is at nine hit points currently from her sixteen, and Anaya has to make a con save. Which she gets plus she's proficient in it. But it doesn't matter. Anea, Kodo, you just turn around, you see arrows fly by, and you see Anea go down unconscious. And that's gonna be Anea's turn. Wait, Drow still goes. She the princess goes up to the bubble. We'll investigate it. Did the music just stop for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Let me, okay, let me play it back. Play it black back for the people. I gotta put this on repeat. There we go. Alright. So the priestess will do an investigation check to see what the hell's going on. Wow, these drow are fucking done dumb, dumb apparently. Alright. So she investigates it. She doesn't know what the hell is going on here. But Ichabod, you said you hear commands spread out. It could be anywhere. Be vigilant. And you just hear another female draw saying, There was a there was an archer outside, but she's down. Some of us should go investigate. Alright, half of you go out, half of you look around. Something weird is afoot. She'll jump through the window. Boop! And we'll basically use all of her movement to get there. Perception check, because you are stealth Kodo. Of this draw woman, but she can't use her attacks. What's your stealth modifier? Five. Okay, I'll just check her stats. Five. Yeah, that plus six. She definitely spots you. But she can't attack because she used it to down Anea. All right, so she spots you, Kodo, and you hear her and Elvis. Ah, there you are. And then it looks like she's ready to aim her crossbow at you. These drow women go out. As they go out, you see them turn invisible. All right, and this female drow is gonna survey the area hold her hand crossbow up and will point and be ready to shoot. 
All right. She will then go here. She'll get up to here. And she looks like she's going towards the same area where the creature was. And here, Ichabod here say, Come, great beast, do not be afraid. Finish your meal. Let me just make private checks. At this point, it is Kodo's go. You see the drow woman, but you also see the creature. What would you like to do? You see Anea go down unconscious one with one hit. Shooting the drow woman. Attack roll. Twenty-two to hit. That will definitely hit. Roll damage. Thirteen points of damage. All right. She takes an arrow. She goes, ah! Yeah, I'm doing my... My, uh, what is that? Kensai shot. Path of the Kensai and the Kensai shot. All right, make another attack. Thirteen. Doesn't hit. She dodges out of the way. What would you like to do? That's it. All right. So, is, is all yes. these all these guys? None of the guys that were fighting are lobies. They're all our level or something. I I just don't get how they have so much health points. Which ones are you talking about? Like the female drow? I mean, it just seems like all of our enemies. It seems like we're always outnumbered, and they always have. At least our hit points. Well, they're survivors, so keep that in mind. That being said, okay. Blue, your turn. At the moment, you're safe, and it doesn't seem like anyone suspected you, but you do know Ichabod is in trouble, and he's probably in that smoke somewhere. But right now, uh, you're currently in a safe spot. What would you like to do? Eh, well... I'm not gonna like saying this, but... Uh, as the drow priestess says to come back for the meal, uh, Blue would holler she out. You don't hear saying. this because she said it in Elvish, so. Okay. Uh, point being, I'm still going to run up to her and try and kick her twice. And, okay. Uh, I like it has the my... first attack with advantage because you're coming out of a hidden position. Okay. And use my, uh, tail for the third attack using a key point for two extra shots nice right. and i did that what's the attack rolls preemptively unfortunately the highest i rolled was an eight so i'm pretty sure 12 is not going to hit for her specifically it will not yeah the other two attacks were lower than that so oh that's right yeah buddy. so you see Blue run Axios and try to do some monk stuff, but it seems like this female drow woman dodges out of the way of each one of his hits. Part of you feels that he is probably because of the bites he's had. It's either that or something else. So it's or the chain still binding me. No. They were ripped off as soon as this creature basically tried grabbed you. So Alright. Ichabod, there's a dagger with a rope nearby you, and you're currently bound still. What would you like to do? Can I get the dagger? You can. You have enough arm length to grab it. Can I use it to help break the chains? Based on your previous investigation check, you could definitely try to jimmy it. So I would like for you to make... What kind of make check this would be? Trying to use stuff. I will say make a make a dexterity check because you're trying to jimmy basically the lock mechanism. I'm gonna start rolling my dice. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you try to like unbound your chains but it seems like you're cutting yourself more than the chains axes you feel a bunch of tugs coming from the rope anything else you would like to do Ichabod? 
If I'm chained to the altar, I can't move or do anything. While I'm, while I'm doing this, does this altar sound hollow? Like echoey, you mean, or? Yeah, like, like... It could hold something inside of it. This altar, no. It is clearly stone. And looking at it, you see that it's been abused quite a lot. All right. Yeah, I'm done. All right. Let's the creature just go. Let me just make this check, secret check here. All right. Let's make this check real quick. Yeah. So, Koto. The weirdest thing happens. You see this octopus shake itself, and as it does, it shakes off this weird giant tiara-like device on its head and just takes it off. And as soon as it does, its eyes go from red to just a plain eyes, looks around, surveys the area, confused, but then he just goes back into the lake, just vanishing. And you hear a elvish for probably coming from the temple saying, Wait, so could you come? Damn it, no, it didn't work. And you feel that something weird is going on here. Uh, but effectively, this creature is out of combat. Axius, you feel tugs against the rope. What would you like to do? Uh, Sam Fisher style. I'm going to try to jump from the darkness into the fog cloud um, with the webbing part I cut to get towards Ichabod. And then once I see that he just cut his wrists with my dagger, uh, trying to help him yep. out of his chains. All right. So I need you to, so how are you managing the chains? You're just trying to rip them off or? Uh... At this point, Ichabod, you do I'm see Axie to... is coming to your aid. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like palm the, uh, the lock in my hand and then just like try to quietly like break it off. All right, so I need you to make a sleight of hand check in that case, since you're trying to be quiet about it. Oh, dirty 20. Yeah, you are able to break the binds of Ichabod with your dagger. That was an action, right? That was an action, yes. All right, uh, is the priestess 10 feet away from me? You sense that from her distance, and from the recent voice activity, that she is 15 feet away. Okay. Uh, could I move five feet towards the edge of the fog cloud so I can be within 10 feet without her seeing me? Yeah, so you could just go one square down. You'll be fine. All right. So I'm still in the fog cloud. Perfect. So um, just seeing how Blue totally botched that up and figuring that he's going to need some help, um, I'm going to use my Channel Divinity Vow of Animity to give me advantage on attack rolls against her for the next minute. Okay, what does that look like? Uh, so, um, let's see. That's a great question. I didn't think about this. Uh, my holy symbol is pretty much on as a choker around my neck. Uh, that starts to glow, um, and it just sort of like Hunter's Mark. Um, I get to see her in this sort of like matrix red aura around her. So it's like, <laughs> it's like fairy fire only devoted to my eyes for like the next minute. All right. You, Blue, you see this red glow aura appear around her, and you tell she's like, she says, what? What? She says something in Elvish. Ichabod, you hear her say, what is this? What the hell is going on? Um... That's and I'm just like I'm next. just like stalking her through the fog like a like a like a prowler. That's my turn right there. You hear Amrin move up. Sure. The devil's coming for you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Amrin says, "Listen, honey, like we need to get out of here. Get your friend. Try to get out." And she will basically make her way out. She'll basically use her. Movement, her cunning action to dash, and then her action to dash to basically get off the map. So she is technically out of combat. Oh, don't want to make her token bigger, just want to get her out. Okay, good. All right. Anaya's turn, but she's unconscious. It's a Drow's turn. Hand crossbow against Kodo. 
This is a plus seven to hit. So let me just roll here. Fifteen hit. AC is eighteen. Alright, that one misses. Shall use your bonus action to reload and fire again. I'm gonna catch that arrow. Then I'm gonna throw it right back at her. Okay. So you spend a key point, you spend another one to throw. Yep. Make an attack. Yep, make an attack roll with decks. What'd you roll? I mean, it'd just be my regular to hit, right? For this... Read Deflect Missiles for me, if it says any modifiers or anything like that. Use your reaction to deflect or catch the missile you are hit by a range attack. You do so, the damage you take, uh, but you can redirect it. Okay. So we'll just say roll d20 and add your dex. You make this attack with proficiency regardless of your weapon proficiencies. Yeah. So, we so roll my your... dex plus my proficiency? Plus a d20, yes. So, roll! So, plus seven. Plus seven to this. Yeah, that'll hit. Me too. So, let me just look up for hand crossbow damage. Hand crossbow. So go ahead and roll a d6 plus your dex. Damage. That's my dex would be nine. All right, she has to make a con save. This will be funny. That's a con. Wow. You just deflect this arrow, Kodo. Ah, ah. She collapses, unconscious. All right. That's that female drow's turn. This woman, not knowing what's going on, will attack you, Blue. She will attack you with her scourge. She gets two attacks with a plus five to hit. So let me just roll d20. So the first attack is a 22 to hit. It hits. You take five points of piercing damage, and I need you to make a con save. Seventeen total on the con save. You save. You feel no. the poison try to course through you, but you are resilient to it. Second attack. Does an eighteen hit you? Eighteen, yes. All right. You take another five piercing, and I need you to make another con save. Twelve? Twelve does not save. You fall unconscious. Not at zero hit points, but unconscious. So, pff. actually, as you feel your buddy Blue go down, and Ichabod, you hear this female just say, This wasn't supposed to go this way! As she's, you hear the sounds of flailing and whips going about. So, this female will drown. <laughs> so... <laughs> This female drow, trying to investigate the area, see that her boss kind of has a situation under control. She will see she has it under control. 
she will leave. And as she leaves, she will turn invisible. All right. Movement has occurred. This drow has fallen unconscious. Koto, you are up. This female drow is down when you deflected her missiles. The octopus has to, seemed to be going uh, to the... Turn right. up to okay, Nea. Okay. I'm taking out the bandages yep. that I got from the wizard, and I'm going to do a medicine check. The, sure. The bleeding and... All right, all medicine that. check. 19. That's, that's really good. You heal her wounds. So I would like you to roll a... Roll a d4 for me. She'll regain that much. And as you heal her, she wakes up from poison. And you see that this is drow poison. Very, very nasty stuff. Could possibly kill you. Um, which you're luckily able to find out that is not dead as she wakes up. And she's go gone up to 11 hit points. And she says, oh, what? What happened? Did, did I get her? I, I push my finger to her lips. I'm talking. Why do you oh, humans oh. talk so fucking much? Aren't you human as well? All Not right. that type of human. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else you would like to do? Uh, I'm just looking out the back. I hear all them inside. I'm close enough that I can hear all this. Yeah, you can hear but, all the ruckus going on. You definitely hear the I, woman near this, so. Yeah, but the uh, place where the big monster came out of was over here, so I yes. don't have a line of sight on them. Nope. So I'm basically healing her, and I'm looking basically at this window and over here because I did see the guys come out the back and turn invisible. She yep. came out of the window, so I basically yep. came over here, bandaged her, found her to shut the fuck up, and I am looking <laughs> basically this way. All right. You are keeping perceptive. All right. Yep. Make a, make a perception check. All right. At this point, Blue, you are unconscious at the moment. So unfortunately, nothing happens. 14. Ichabod. 14? All right. Yes. You are free from your bounds, sir. And Axius is nearby you. What would you All like right. to do? Do I still have my chain shirt on, or did they take that off me, too? You still have your armor on. You just don't have the rest of your gear. And I got his plus one dagger, right? In, in your hand currently? Yes. All right. Uh... I'll run out an attacker. All right. Axius, do you use... Do you let me combine use your dagger, first off? Just want to clarify. Uh, yes, if he has no other weapons on him. Yep, you clearly see that he has no weapons. So you go up to attacker. I'll try both. rolling it for just a moment. All right. All right. First attack. 18 plus 7, 25. Definitely hits. For six points of damage. Okay. Second attack. Wait, wait, my... wait. This, isn't that sneak attack? Because you came out the fog and she wouldn't have noticed. This is sneak attack, so go ahead and roll your sneak attack damage if you want. Okay. Let me find it. I think, I think if you're level one rogue, it's 1d6. Yep. So yeah, she takes an additional points. Course. You stab her. Second attack with the dagger. Mm -hmm. Get him. Get her. Nine. Doesn't hit. She dodges out of the Nine. way of your second stabbing. Can I punch her? <laughs> Bonus action no. punch her? No. You're not a monk. I got an arm strike, though. That's it. So for you... So let me just see real quick here. Let me just check on this. Arnhem Strike is an action for you. Oh, it's Unless an you're... Action. Yeah. Unless you're a monk. Unfortunately, okay. you cannot do it. Punch as a bonus action. Um, that's all I got. Alrighty. Axius, you're up. You sense um, Ichabod 
punching the shit out of this drow priestess. What would you like to do? Yeah, I wasn't expecting blue to go down. Um, I am going to use my halberd with a 10 foot reach within the fog to s slice at her with advantage. All right. All right, first attack is with advantage. All the attacks are with advantage because of the vow of anonymity. Oh, yeah, that's true. Attack. Get her. Uh, 25 to hit. Definitely hits. For. Ugh. Oh, six. I am going to pop a spell slot for Divine Smite. Okay. So that's six plus 2d8. 2d8. Yep, it's 2d8 per. So that's six plus another nine, so fifteen damage. Total. Yeah, nice. on the first attack. Um, yep. And Sex attack. With advantage. Ah, no crit. Ah, uh, eighteen to hit. Eighteen. Does hit. All right. For another thirteen damage. Yep. And I, since I'm still hidden from her, I'm going to move five feet this way so that it's a different area than when she was stricken from. And that's my turn. Okay. Ichabod, you see that she's walking on death's door. Erin would okay. go up, but she, oh, she isn't available. Oh, I'm going to use another divine spike like you. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Aeneas, go. Uh, she gets up. Kodos, like, what do I do? What do I do? Can, what can I do to help? And she whispers this to you, Kodo. Mm, shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. She will be quiet. She says, should we... Sh she oh my whispers. god! <laughs> She's unsure about herself and her predicament. Um, so she'll hold an action and wait for you to basically give her an order what to do. Um... Drow's go. The only active drow, really, besides this unconscious drow, is the priestess. She will make a last-ditch attempt to do something crazy. We'll just read her um, stuff. Above Tabor, that drow is bleeding out, right? She's bleeding out, yeah. Okay. She will... Let's look at what she can do. Alright. That's what time's called for desperate measures. So... This female drow, seeing that she's on her last legs and basically with nothing else to do, with little to no help from her fellow followers, she says, I, I tried doing this the correct way, Master, but I need your help. She'll attempt to summon a demon, so I have to roll a d100 to see if it happens. What? A demon. She is unsuccessful, unfortunately. Uh, you just... As she's, you are clearly hearing some demon chants in Infernal. Excuse me, in Abyssal. My apologies. And unfortunately, nothing happens. If anything, she just got hurt worse. So that is a failed attempt on her end. Um, Kodo, you're up. You hear some weird chanting, but nothing occurred to you, best of your knowledge. What would you like to do? And Anaya's waiting on your instruction. Yeah, look over my shoulder. And do the eyes towards the window. I'm going to start slowly like, making my way and making sure that she's following. All right. She will do so. About 15 okay. feet. Uh, looking yep. through the window, what do I see before I jump in? You see blue down. You see this drow priestess woman a little bit on fire and glowing red. And you see Ichabod holding a dagger with a rope attached towards the cloud of smoke. Other than that, you do see some webbing. And that is it. I'm going to look behind her. Look behind me to her. Motion that we're going through the window. And point to the pews. And tell her to kind of peel off to the left. Now I'm going to put her off to the right. Okay. She will do so. I'm going to jump in behind the pew. Okay. And I'm going to take a couple shots at that chick. Um, All right. Blue's down, so yep. I don't have blue in the way, right? Nope. He is laying down on the ground. 
There's darkness behind me. Fog cloud right here. Yep, you do see a bunch of cloud and a bunch of webbing. As far as the darkness, you can't see this radius because it's invisible to you. As far as you know, you don't right. know what's going on in this area. Right, I'm just making sure that this crap is still on the board. Yep, so it's I jumped through active. the window and there's... Yeah, I jumped through the window and there's all kinds of crazy crap happening. Mm -hmm. now, I don't see Axius, but I do see Akebob. I'm going to start taking pop shots at this. Attack roll. Okay. Does she have all those spider leg things going too? That is just like an aesthetic design. It's, she's just a regular job with some weird priestess clothing. So. Okay. She just looks crazy. Okay. Yep. She's a crazy priest lady. Well, and she's a little she bit of blaze too. Ever ran the other way. <laughs> 22. That hits. Roll damage. 12. All right. NC shot. All righty. 23. Yep. Hits. Plus four. 17 points of damage for the second. How would you like to defeat this drow priestess? Shot through the mouth to shut her up. All right. You take aim. You fire two bolts straight through the mouth, and she gets planted against the wall. And she's just like, try to say some broken elvish, but unfortunately with the arrow in her mouth, you can't really do much. And she just stands and hangs there. And she is dead. At the moment, Co what combat's that? currently suspended. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, at this point, combat is over at the moment. That being said, do what you want. Um, I'm going to put yeah. concentration on darkness to cast pure wounds on blue. Sure. How long am I unconscious for? Um, for Probably a few till seconds. Until he wakes you up. Yeah, till you wake up. So, so as he's doing cure wounds to you, you are slowly waking up. So that's six points of healing for blue. As you're healing, Axius, this fog cloud just evaporates. Indicating that the spell is over. The fog cloud or darkness? The fog cloud. You dispelled the darkness. Okay. All right. Um, and then I'm just going to, as soon as that happens, I'm going to run out the window without saying much and go find Amran. Out this right. window. All right, you do so. You gotta search this place and see if the scrolls are here. <laughs> All right. So, Ichabod, would you like to do anything? I. Well, and he runs and jumps out the windows. Does the dagger get yanked out of my hand? Assumingly. <laughs> so, as far know, as everything it else, it's off so Ichabod could use it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are currently holding his dagger. As you can see, you do see the altar, which is, like, very damaged, but you do also see four stone chests around the, these vicinities. So it seems like to be all decrepit statues of sorts. But you do see four stone I, chests there. By chance, or do any of our weapons seem to be laying around? There's no other weapons laying around? Unfortunately, no. Oh... I'll take a chest and try to see if I can open it. You prop it open. You find blue and yours equipment. I re-equip myself and it blues all his stuff. All I'll right. go to the next chest. Are you going to loot all these chests? Yeah, I'm going to look through all the chests. Okay, so, Ichabod, here's what you find. You find a plus one studded leather armor set. A hand crossbow. Ooh. A plus one hand crossbow, excuse me. You find ten bolts covered in drought poison. You find a blow gun with five darts. And as far as coinage, you find a thousand gold, five hundred silver, a hundred copper, and go down. I'm trying to type this out. <laughs> and a slipper of spider climbing. A slipper, not a, a pair? A pair of slippers, yes. Okay. So that's what you find, Ichabod, as you loop through these chests. So... And assume... A thousand gold? 
1,000 gold, 500 silver, 100 copper. And after studded leather armor, what was it? After the plus one studded leather armor, you find a plus one hand crossbow with 10 bolts. 10 bolts, drow poison. Yep. But no scrolls. So that was the scrolls. first. That was the first one, right? Or are you listing off everything you found in all the I'm remaining list three chests? I'm listing off everything out of the chests because he's going to loot through all the okay. chests. Got you it. find three scrolls, but you don't know what they are. They are rolled up. I'll grab all three of the scrolls. I'll take my dagger and thump at the bottom of the chest to see if there's any hidden compartments. There isn't. All right. Are there really steps there going up or down? These or steps go going... up to get on, get on the That's platform. The... There's steps that go on the platform that would lead out to the giant hole out. And nothing about the altar. Nope. All right. Kodo, I'm assuming you're just going to make your exit. No, I'm doing Overwatch. Okay. Since there, right. I I see that blue is up. I saw Axius take out the window, and I still see Ichabod going around this room checking everything. So I'm looking, yep. basically doing Overwatch because there was what seven more Drow somewhere, and they all turned invisible. So I'm basically just trying to look for movement in the grass. Okay. Trying to list for sound. Are you staying inside or are you ste stepping outside? Staying inside, but I'm like looking out okay. the <laughs> side of the door. All right. As you look looking. out, as you look out, you do see a few tracks that go in this general direction, which after a certain point just vanish. But as you are kind of looking out, you do see magical scriptures in Elvish above you that say in Elvish, you do. And since you do read Elvish, it does say, let go out, be hidden from sight in Elvish. And you can tell these rune, these words along, are, along this doorway are magical. Are they like in the stone magical or just glowing? They're like, like in the store magical wrapping around this entire doorway this is how they turn invisible the drow that went out the window did not turn invisible these runes is what's making them turn invisible and we break the runes and see if they become visible the only one I... to find out well before you do that and i go outside so i can turn invisible it come by you just see kodo just vanish holy crap <laughs> I tell Elena to, to go out the door. Alright. Well, she also vanishes. Him... <laughs> before you break them, hold up here. <laughs> yeah, let me say something. I won't... Okay. Uh, generally, it is not the source of the effect that will end the invisibility. So, yes, we may break them, but they may still remain invisible. Okay. I go over to the priest hanging on the wall and I loot her. <laughs> All right. Make an investigation check on her. And then Blue walks out the door. Yep. Blue, you turn invisible. And eight. And eight. You find her whip, but that's really it. She's barely wearing anything, though. That's probably why. No rings or braces, bracelets? Nope. Or... nope. Hey, I take the whip. All right. You have a... You have a scourge, which is basically a flail, that has an effect where, on hit, the target must succeed a constitution saving throw DC of 16 or more or fall unconscious. Is that a magical... Per attack. Yes, it is. 
as it is a drow weaponry. All right, and you walk out the door, presumably. Yeah. You walk out it through the door. Like it does before. what? If on hit, the creature that was hit must make a DC 16 con save or fall unconscious. Not at zero hit points, just at unconscious. I don't see it in the equipment thing. All right. I'll if you it. don't, just make a flail and then just add that stat to it under custom. So as you walk through the entrance of the church with everyone but Axius turning invisible, and Amarin for that matter, uh, you destroy the runes. And as far as you know, you guys are out of combat at a slight worried that the drought are still out there while you are invisible. And you guys all level up since you survived this deadly encounter. And we'll handle the leveling up process when we come back for break. So and so we'll take a quick five to ten minute break and then we'll turn with some more Dead Realms action. So we'll see you in a couple of minutes.
And we are back after some leveling up discussions of what the party wants to do. Um, you guys took some levels and some classes. Blue specifically took the way of the Ascended Dragon, the new monk subclass from Fizzman's Dragons. All right. And with that, we are going to continue where we left off. So let me just play some music here. Do, 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 do. If no one wants those slippers of spider climbing, I'll take them. Play. Oh, that's the wrong command. Here we go. Do you guys hear that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. All right. So after leaving the vicinity, invisible to the naked eye, with the exception of Axis, Axis and Amrin, um, you guys, map-wise, would be heading towards the roads, which at this point, it's a crossroads between the grasslands and the dan deserts of Ankarok, which you guys are around the roadside at the crossroads. However, Axis and Amrin both catch up with each other, and you see Amrin just waiting on the roadside in between try to keep herself hidden axius and eventually you two meet she says finally took you a while where are the others i think they went out the other way so it's just you and i right now all right well if they went out the other way we have to go find them but i think now's the better time to talk about and she looks at your new demonic form about this situation you have at the moment would you care to explain to me what is this so, we try to defend your town. Also, I am speaking all this in Inferno. It's like, sure. we try to defend your town. I fell unconscious. I was stuck in purgatory. I made a deal to gain power to be able to defeat this entire thing. And this is the result of that. What deal did you make? Listen, when I was going to die, I was told I was going to the Nine Hells anyway. So I made a deal to be useful here for our sake. Who you made the deal to exactly? Who the hell do you think? We are tieflings. Who the hell do you think listens to us? I've been preaching and praying to Kor for years. Not a thing. I pray to Osmodius once, and him and I are making deals. Of course he would make a deals. He's our kind. Not only that, but the father of our kind. On top of that, Axius, you do know that devils were born to make deals and the it, deals it doesn't are... matter we wouldn't be able to even have a kid unless i made this deal there's not enough souls to make tieflings yet i i she looks like a little bit flustered both because from the combat and like your statement and she says well well hope you know what you're getting yourself into with these kinds of deals there's never a happy ending with this. At this point, the rest of the party hears this conversation while invisible. But in Infernal, of course, so there's like weird like like demonic growls going on between it. And you see Axis and Aaron seems like, like having an argument while you guys are invisible. You guys are aware of each other's presence, but as far as like placement, you guys don't know what. As you guys are recovering from the battle that just had. And ten feet of me? You Make a perception check while you're arguing. The rest of the party, what are you doing? Um, are those demonic growls familiar? We've heard those demonic growls before. Yeah, you clearly, as you like, you're approaching like the same area. You guys clearly see Axius and Amrin just arguing with each other in a different language. Seventeen. Seventeen. You get the sense of footsteps are approaching you, but you don't know whose footsteps. Uh, above table, uh, was it a, allowed for me to get the slippers of spider climbing? Does someone have no, you, a one for those? You can okay. take them. You know, yeah, you know that they're there. So. You get the sense of footsteps. You don't know whether who's the. So. so what do y'all do? Uh, I am going to go in. I don't know whose it is, and I know the draws are probably still invisible. 
So, unfortunately, I am going to go into a, a rage. She says, what's going on? What the hell is happening? Are you alright? Someone's coming. I know who it is. And then I go into a rage. <laughs> she preps and... her daggers. Her back's against yeah. yours. And I just... My my whole bear totem is, is, is glowing, this whole dark burgundy color. And I hold my action to attack whatever has been 10 feet that I can see. Hey. Okay. Throw, <laughs> <laughs> throw a rock at his foot. You guys are Throw a rock at his foot. You guys are so noisy. If we were drow, you guys would be dead. <laughs> you hear the voice of Kodo somewhere, but you don't know where. <laughs> as a rock just hits your foot. Why is your you and your sister argue so much? <laughs> Axes, you want your dagger back? <laughs> Do I see the dagger? Is it invisible? <laughs> yeah, if, if I hold it out by the blade tip, can he see the hill? He ah. cannot see anything. <laughs> because all your equipment's also invisible, too. Unless he attempts oh. to make an attack or something else. Uh, so. Throw the dagger at his foot. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Axes, just put your hand out. <laughs> I put my hand out and then, yeah. I walk up and I put the dagger in his hand and let go. It doesn't become visible. You are uninvisible now. Oh, I'm uninvisible? You're uninvisible. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Axios, you see your dagger and then all of a sudden, Ichabod just randomly appears in front of you. Like he came out of thin air. I'm gonna disengage my rage, retire the. <laughs> Dagger to my hand and just quietly now it's like you guys got out then. Let's freaking go. She you see Aaron put away her daggers. She's a little bit called the situation. Well, Ichabod is it, right? Yeah. You found out if you walk out the door you turn invisible. Ah, that seems to explain that situation. Where is where is everyone else? And there's a standing around you. <laughs> she's kind of like weirded out. And Nea does say, like, yeah, I'm I'm nearby. But she's still invisible. As they're talking, I'm gonna go into Overwatch. Sure. Just move a good fifty feet from the party. Sure. Kind of He's looking just a towards where <laughs> don't they don't see me. I'm still invisible. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, they don't hear shit. Axius, with your blind sight, you sense, like, assumedly Kodo just walking away. He has 10 foot blind sight. He doesn't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take Overwatch. What's everyone else doing? We get the hell out of here now. Yeah. Well, where do we go I exactly? Cameron says. Axis. Did you open them yet? No, because I don't know if opening will. I don't know anything about magical scrolls. We need to find somebody that knows magical scrolls. Amaran says, let me take a look at those, actually. I might know a thing or two. I hand her one of them. Okay. So, scrolls specifically wise, now that you guys have a closer look, each scroll has a different color band that wraps it. There's one red, there's one green, and there's one blue. Which one do you give me? Give her the red one, and I still right. have the other two in my hand. Yep. She opens it up, and she reads it. She says, "Ah, this is some kind of weird drow magic of sorts." And she's like reading it. She says, "This is for. Hmm, this seems like to be some kind of. This is the web spell. So you have a web spell scroll." Okay, and then I hand her the green one. Hannah, there's a green one. She opens it up. She reads it. She says, this... Oh, well, this could actually help us all out right now. What is it? It's a Mass Cure Wounds spell scroll. That won't help blue. Should we use it? I handed the last one. So it's I would save one. that one. Just hear a voice from nowhere. I would save that one. <laughs> okay. The red one. 
No, the blue one. Uh, we're at blue. The blue one, excuse the me. red one was re web. My apologies. Was... Yep. Listen, I got a lot of stuff behind here, so I'm just trying to make it's it. It's fine. Clear. I'm just reminding you as I'm taking notes. <laughs> um, and I appreciate it. Uh, the red one. Blue. The red one is a blue. You see, Aaron, look. Like the blue scroll, thank you. She reads it. <laughs> she says, This. She look like, takes a little closer. She says, This is half broken. It seems like to be a combination of Elvish and s some other language. Here, do any of you else read it? And she gestures it out to the party. For those who understand Elvish, you can clearly see, like, this is a spell scroll, but half the page is in Elvish. But the other half yeah. is in another language. What languages do you, does everyone around the vicinity understand? I have Dwarvish and Orc. Okay. Just common and infernal. Okay. Common, dr common draconic, and primordial. Okay. And they only speaks common. Unfortunately, no one understands the other half of this spell scroll. <laughs> the parts I understand. What you can they? tell you can tell Ichabod this is some kind of scripture of a clerical spell of sorts. However, most clerical spell scrolls usually Ha, you know, utter prayers and so on and so forth. But you get the gist of half of the scroll saying that this is in some way some kind of a weird, dark, necrotic healing type of magic. It's assuming drow, but because of the other language, you're not too sure. Because drow, even though they are elvish, um, they do, you do know that they can also speak other languages, but the other half of the scroll you don't recognize. Where the hell is our sorcerer at? Yeah, where the hell is Beatrice? Where's Rico? Rico was Rico. taken by a rock. Very what? big bird. <laughs> Says yeah. the bushes off to the road. <laughs> when? <laughs> Many, yes. many minutes ago, maybe uh, an hour, I point off to the big ditch. That was a bird's foot that grabbed Rico and one of the drow. He has the onk. No, I got the onk. Oh, you do? Correct. I took the onk and the map off your unconscious body to find these scrolls. There was a crown on the creature from water. Yeah, I say, yeah. I say an elvish octopus, but I don't know how to say it in common. It sure. seemed <laughs> that they were controlling it with this, this crown of sorts. It seemed like the creature did not want to be there. So it took off the, the crown and it left. All good and dandy, but we gotta find a clerical or a magic user to figure out the rest we, of this scroll. We should head southwest towards Sacoma. Maybe in Sacoma? Is uh above Tabor, that's where the rest of the people were going, correct? One second. I'm pulling up the map. The map glitched out on me, so I had to close it and reopen it. Oh, uh... We were going switch. south. Yeah, so as far as where you guys' placement is, um, do you guys need the link to the map, or are you guys good? I got, got a map. I, okay. So you guys... A, a real map, but... So you guys are in the in-between of the desert and, like, this grassland that is on the road, as if you're going towards Parnass. You guys are in that weird in-between area right now. The townsfolk are in the hillside south of Parnass. Parnass. That's what Kodo, not Kodo, that's what Blue, Anea, and Amran know. My Forgotten Realms map doesn't have any of that. Parnass. I'll link it. 
part is. I'll link it to oh, the Dead Realms text. We were near the the Great the Peak lake. Mountains, right? Um, I'm gonna put it in the, the Great chat Peak. Right now. Because my my notes that we had were near Parnas and the Great Peak Mountains. I put the map in the yeah. text chat so everyone could just follow along. So if you go zoom out and zoom into Parnas, which is nearby the Great Peak Mountains, you guys will see a road that was coming out of Parnas that is going towards the desert. You guys are in between the grassland and the desert. Meanwhile, you also see a forest nearby just burning a huge forest fire. Just smoking from your previous actions. So that, so you guys are around that vicinity specifically. Sorry, I'm still trying to find it. You can also enter so it into... Look at the marsh of Kelamer and the Great yeah, Folk. Yeah, you guys Oaks. are north of, yeah, you guys are north of that mm -hmm. in the Great Peak Mountains. The red, you should see a red looking at big, like He's looking at the map. I was just pointing out Ah, okay, big, okay, okay. Uh, map Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, markers. You guys... But again, you guys are in between the desert and the grasslands. And so they were going towards Parnast. You guys, got, were... you guys got split apart. You guys were heading towards this Greenland where you encountered drought. That's what happened. You guys just formed around the church. And you guys just head west. I uh, found Parnast now. Isn't that yeah, just burned true. down? Yeah, you see Parnas just basically burned down and crumbling with a nearby forest fire. Which at this point has covered the entire forest area. So whatever wildlife uh, is weather there. coat woods. Yep. So. And uh, where did we... But did we leave them in the, the hills near the Dawn Pass? So you guys... So as far as the townsfolk they are mm -hmm. around the hill slash mountain range south of Parnas, around that vicinity okay that's, that's where blue... i tell them yeah all right continue mm -hmm. on friends now that we know location and whatnot yeah i mean <clears throat> It seems if we went to cancel the spell, all we have to do is interact with someone and the spell is cancelled. But I would like to try to stay invisible as long as we can so I can give overwatch for group as we move. All of you are too noisy. <laughs> What time of day is it? It is slowly morning. turning to daytime. Yep, it's morning. <laughs> daytime, so. Morning going towards the noon. This is actually like, at this point, because like combat happens in seconds, the sun is out and it's just like bright early in the morning, like sun just rises. But because the sun hasn't been seen in years since the apocalypse, it's just gray skies and the coloration determining. This is a light, bright, gray color, so you know that morning just happened. Ooh, I still feel like we need to rest. This is like two battles in one damn day. Yes. I mean, Blue's been infected. We gotta find somebody to help him. We have yes. time to rest. Yeah. Not if you want to say friend. I'm trying to... You said to go north? Is that what the half-man said? To go north. <laughs> uh, above table, you guys were talking about like going into the Evermores, right? Where we? On the other side of the high forest. I don't remember that. Uh you guys were had a lead 
going towards some body of water. I don't remember the body of water that you guys were needing to go to. It was yeah. up north. The original plan of the party was to initially head west, but it seems like you, your own personal goals is slowly aligned. So whether your goals are still the same or not, it's up to you guys. But that was the original plan. But because stuff happened, goals might have changed. But that's up for the party to discuss what the next move is. Uh, it's so up to you. you we goals, should link so. up. Well, my goals is to basically babysit this party because the wizard paid me to. <laughs> you paid you in gold. And you guys also have that information in regards. Well, no, Koda would have that information. You just know. Yeah, like, I didn't tell him shit. Where... Yeah, as far as like information, Anaya, Amran, and Blue possibly know where Black might be, but is unsure. But. Amran says to the party, well, Black was discussing about gra grabbing the skulls. For what purpose? I do not know, but he sticks them. By the way, when were you guys going to tell me about these damn skulls in the first place? Like, why are they so important? And what exactly do they do? Clearly, they do something. Don't you As group me with them. I've been around you guys for 12 hours only. Yeah, so we were originally hunting Beatrice, who had just happened to have one of these skulls, and then got looped in to find a third skull to prevent her from getting it, and had no idea about this whole black character until you were kidnapped. Uh huh. So, where is this Beatrice woman exactly? Yeah, and I look at the group. Where the hell is Beatrice? I lost her in the fight. Found you and Rico and tried to find the scrolls. What's your wife's name again? Aeneas? Amran. 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 Amran, is there any other town nearby that might have a cleric? Not any towns nearby. The only other town besides Harnast, of course, would be. As the DM looks at his notes. <laughs> um, uh, Lork is a big one. Or let me make a is check. another big one. Let me make a history check for Cameron. So she's more localized around the area. Straight 14. Okay. You know, I may have access to a spell that might cure this. I just need a rest and have time to prepare it. Maybe we should link up with the rest of town. Take rest. That's, that's, I think we can agree, um, Koto. But as far as possible clerics, I think the only possible cleric town that might have one would probably be somewhere past the Dawn Pass. Maybe in Lork if it's still up, but I highly doubt it at this point. Hmm. I from around here. We use the Dawn Pass often to turn the tide. Maybe. So we sh Aeneas says, so we find the rest of the town and rest and then go to Lork to see what the scroll does. Hmm. Yeah. It'd be wise, but I've noticed you all don't do many wise things, so it's up to group. <laughs> Would we know how far away the, like, how far of a travel that would be? Uh, from Two here, days at least. Let's see here. Uh, assuming you guys are going at a normal pace. Two to three days, depending on encounters. Plus, you gotta get past a now destroyed town of Parnas, which is zombie filled at this point, and a burning forest on top of that. And you're going through hilllands and mountain range when you get to the Dawn Pass. So, we'll say roughly three to four days, depending on your movement and possible encounters. Can we just go straight to the Dawn Pass? Can we just skip the town part? <laughs> Uh, towns are past 
town part. And we still have the survivors of Parnast waiting for you, for this group up in the foothills. Yeah, but you guys just said we can't rest because Blue needs help immediately. But you want to take a detour. Blue Make just said if he rests, he might have spell. So then let's rest now. What about town folk? They're already dead. Let's cut them, ride them off, and go. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, okay. Are you sure? Because then your mm -hmm. sister might be dead too, Ichabod, as she, as Aaron says to you. <laughs> I have no ties to these. Wizard just said to make sure to help party. Wizard? Yes. What oh. wizard? You've been over this. The wizard I talked to. First time heard of it. No. Just... <laughs> you said yeah, you knew his I'm name. I don't think well, you've... I think you've only told Blue this information, because Ichabod, oh, Rico, and told... Axios weren't there. <laughs> what was that you guy's name? Blue. Olin? I, th I think Orion, I think it was. Orion. He was a weird coop. He only stayed indoors for most of the time. Didn't really help the town much. Ah, uh, yes. Did not tell you. Or Blue. Met with... Uh, Wizard. Strange. Kind. Name Orion. That's where Beatrice is. Seem to... How have a magic library? Okay, the player doesn't remember because it's been a while, but I'm sure yeah. we would remember. Uh, you guys know him as just uh, a wizard that would stay in his tower in the city of Parnast. But you guys never went to yeah. his own his little <laughs> his crib yeah Orion Orion was weird he was mainly a shut and was afraid of infection he said either he's either dead or would you say well, he he's cooked. not dead okay not dead. well he probably as got in a strange he seemed like yes. every other wizard I met all right, oh, yeah. are strange. Where's this tower at? Oh, can't get to it. Not from here. <laughs> he spell. That's only if wizard would let you. Don't you know wizards? They're always secretive. <laughs> that doesn't quite help us, Koto. Emron says. Wizard sent. Koto to help you out. Koto's here. That is true. The town? Which town? The burnt town with all the zombies in it. Hmm. I don't think I could keep party safe. We should not do that. <laughs> not enough arrows. Too many zombies. I told you. What we should do up to you i'm gonna go find a like a, a tree nearby and just like sit against it sure <laughs> try, to, try to long rest through this pointless conversation sure so just confirmation you guys are taking the long rest here presumably yeah all right all right i'm still in, how long does this spell last this invisibility spell does it just last until i interact with someone you don't know that's awesome. Who knows? Who so knows? I spy I with my spider climbing shoes, I just walk up the side of the tree. And I Well How far are we from the chapel? Can we still see it? You can still yeah, see we're it. We're not that far. And let's move a little further away before the the drow come looking for us. Well that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Let's travel until we have to set up camp and then let's prioritize All rest right. over trying to travel 
You can take road. Let's go through the foothills. Alright. So, you guys are going to move and rest, or are you just going to rest where you are? We're going to move. Yeah, Let's move go. first and then rest. Okay. Where would you like to move? North, south, east, west. West? Yeah, stay put. Start, start towards that other town. Is they're all running around in the foothills, right? The town, the people of Parnet being led by my sister, being led by yes. your sister and other members, and then they do have like warriors and archers that you've left with them, so do keep that in mind. But what, how long they, they have... survive or not, you don't know. <laughs> they have so. one archer and two warriors. <laughs> no, I thought we sent more off with them. No. Oh, so, the rest die. And they're so, south of where Barnett was in those right. foothills. Yes. Yep. In between. Yep. Yeah, they're currently in between those foothills and the mountain ranges. But mm -hmm. at this point, just so that we can move on with the game, confirmation. Which direction would you like to go and rest? Well, we got to go past Barnett to get west of there. So, yeah, yep. west. All right. Yep. So you go west. You hit find a nearby whatever's left of the forest and you guys take turns with watch as nothing happens other than the flames burning nearby with the forest and the town of Parnas as you guys basically sleep in for the morning sleep into the afternoon for those who want to take a long rest you regain half your spell slots round it down if it's odd and uh, excuse me and you regain half up to half your hit dice too and if you want to use hit dice before it, we get the long rest to regain hit points, I'll, I will allow you to do so as well. So while you're doing all that, you guys wake up from a long rest. You basically slept in for the morning. What do you do? At this point, the fires nearby started to dissipate. Kota, with much of the forest that you came out of, it's crazy how big wildfires are and it's a shame that the druids are no longer around for they would definitely not allow this to occur but the forest that you guys were in is like basically just nothing but barely standing trees as ash fills the nearby area and with some burning burnt creatures both undead and animals alike all around you and you also see further down the path the town of Parnas. This once town that you guys were in that you thought was a sanctuary is now just basically destroyed with a ogre going through it along with a horde of undead through it as well. This one safe town now becoming all the other towns that you've encountered throughout the past two years of your guys' survival. But it's later on in the day. You guys are somewhat rested. Axius you take, you do not, you lose one level of exhaustion. And. I wasn't exhausted. I thought I ate the chicken and lost that. Exhaustion. Oh, yeah, you did ate the chicken. My bad. Um, Shh. Magic. Chicken. <laughs> Talk about the chicken. <laughs> but Kodo. <Not> chicken? <laughs> Kodo, you are still invisible, surprisingly. And so is Anaya. Yes. And so is Blue. Yes. You guys, all three of you realize that you are. Still invisible. Blue, you feel very sick at this point. Your max hit points goes down by one. Okay. Uh, and you, you start to feel the infection go through your draconic body, but not fully taking you yet. Try and cast uh, lesser, lesser Restoration on myself, see if that does anything. Yeah, let me read Lesser Restoration here. You touch a, um, you me, touch a creature me. and can end either one disease or one condition afflicting it, and then it lists the, the condition. You cast greater restoration on yourself. As it does, you do lose your invisibility. Axius, at this point, you do see Blue just electrify himself, trying to do lesser restoration. However, I he's doing greater. No, he said greater, but he meant lesser. 
Oh, um, above table, we know previous that uh, lesser restoration doesn't work. For the infection, no. So as the electricity runs through your veins, usually it would cure whatever ailments would have you. Even after that, you still feel the infection coursing through your veins. You feel to your clerical knowledge that a lesser restoration is not enough to cure this infection. Well, bad news, guys. We need to find a higher level cleric. We can't, uh, what I have isn't going to suffice. We'll figure it out. You just say a lot until then. I'm glad that you're visible now. Invisible zombie would be bad. Well, uh, if we, uh, <laughs> as long as we don't run into any more drow, I think I'll be able to stay on my feet. I don't think um, drow wants to mess with us anymore. Well, well, I'm. Can I pull the map and the arc out and ask if where um because it led us to the scrolls. I'm going to ask it. Have we found the scrolls yet? And see if it like spins or doesn't move or anything. Roll a d100 for me. All right. Nothing happens. You're pointing the Ankh at the map. No significance is happening. The only thing that you see are the glowing lights that you've been recognizing. You do see a rotating, like a back and forth between a glowing red and green light specifically yeah. around. Let me tell you real quick. You see a back and forth between a red and green light around Avareska, which is the mountain top below the Great Cloak Hills. And you see a purple glow coming from what seems like to be the south part of the mountain range, right in between the marsh of the Claim Himber. I can't pronounce it, my apologies. And the bottom. I think it was good. Oh, he's back. Oh, I see we're, him. we're good. Our producer's back, guys. So we're good. Okay. Continue. So that's what you see, but nothing more. Okay. Sorry, right. just to clarify, you said that we get all of our uh, features and whatnot back on a long rest? Yes. You get your features back, you gain half your hit dice, and half your spell slots if any rounded down. But Ichabod, so that's we're what a... you see. A rotate... So, so again, we're a little bit Ichab... past Parnast? A bit west of Parnast? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are, like, in between... Like, you're close nearby Parnas enough to, like, stay away, but, like, not close enough to get it. Like, you, it's in eyes view, basically. And would I know how how many... Uh, how long it would take for us to get to the pass? The mountain pass? The mountain pass, depending on which route you take, if you go straight through town, it could probably take you maybe a day and a half through town but if you're trying to go around it through the mountain ranges and the hilltops and stuff like that it could take longer depending on what happens and what happens i thought we're already past parnas so we don't have to worry about it ah i see so we'll say for argument's sake you guys are like around these hilltops south of parnas but not close enough to it we'll say that that being said it would probably take about a day and a half to get to the Dawn Pass, assuming only nothing happens. Say we do that. Yeah. Quick as way or as we, quick as a way to get there. We take the road. It would be safe at night. We stay on the road. Sure. Right. 
So you guys are traveling? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone roll a d6 for me. Two. 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 <laughs> Two. One. One. Oh, God. So... So, two, 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 and one. I roll a d6 now. Two. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Nothing happens. It's a safe day of traveling. You guys could talk to each other while amongst traveling, or what have you. Kodo, you are staying invisible and being vigilant. Anea, yep. trying to do so. Everyone else is basically uninvisible. So... What do you talk amongst your first day of traveling? Anybody pick up the mushroom things from the cart? Oh. And they, uh, you can he hear like a bad sense of like, oh no, expression, even though you can't see her. But you get the feeling that you guys, so this is a, oh, we. You can tell in her voice that she's doing this. And the, the wagon went with all the villages, if I remember right. You don't remember. No, you said, I don't know. You said uh, they took the wagons. Oh, yeah, they did take the wagon. Yeah, it's in my notes. It's in my notes. She, she had a different horse. They took Buttercup and Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. All right. She says, oh, well, I'm glad they're safe at least. All right. Some of a trip. Right. Anything else? What else do you guys talk about amongst your travels? It's a full uh, day. Would I notice the crossbow that's an Ichabod's possession? So it's Ichabod. Yeah, I was like, you think your wife could use that, or do you want I to use it? I wasn't physically there when you asked it the first time, so there's no oh. answer. Uh, I was yeah, like, look, yeah, look, look, look what I got, and I'm and then I'm discouraged, and you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's quite unique, but I do notice you have a hand crossbow. She notices it. She says, are you going to use that at all, or? No, I... can you use it? I can. Could be beneficial. I hand her the hand crossbow and the, and the pin darts. Oh, thank you, Ichabod. I'll put these to good use. And she... Like, puts the bolts in her bag and basically attaches it to her satchel. All right. If anybody needs healing, I can do a little bit of healing over the day. Oh, I'm good. Fully healed. Let's go. How are you oh, yeah. Uh, down 13 points. Okay, I'll cast a Cure Wounds on you at level one. Nine points. Nine points? If I'm doing this right. All right. I'm only down four. That's cool. And then I'll do the same thing to myself. Okay. That's going to be seven points. You got to so heal yourself. Try to do some hunting while we're walking to get some food for dinner. All right. Bye. I'm sorry. I'm That's just right. adding it to Emmons. Okay. So you guys are hunting. Now, I want you guys to make a. St Who's hunting for some? I am. Um, I think Anna should stay with Blue, and I don't know what your wife wants to do. Yeah, I'm not gonna go hunting since I'm not exactly feeling all that well. Okay. 
I'm gonna climb a tree and eat my chicken. <laughs> okay. You climb and eat your chicken. It's very tasty. Away from the group. Sure. It is very tasty. <laughs> it's... Okay. Alrighty. So, Axius and Sirius are hunt. Axius and Ichabod are hunting, yes? Yeah. Alright, both of you make stealth checks. <laughs> oh, dang it. Seven. Alright. 18. Okay. Now I want both of you to make perception checks. What is happening? Eight. Nineteen. Okay. So, Echabod, you're being stealthy as usual. Axius, with your new form, you're still trying to get used to how, like, general size you are. So, unfortunately, like, you are, you climbing these mountains, like, it's very difficult. It's catching noise all around you. Um, but you do see, in comparison to Ichabod, what seems like to be a baby goat, a mountain goat specifically, um, but it is scurrying away because of the noise you made. What do you do? I'm going to motion it over. Uh, how far away is it? It is 30 feet away, but it is taken off at this point with a head start because of your noise. 30 feet? Yep, but um, it's moving, so. Yeah, I let's, let's freaking... Can I move 10 feet quickly and then throw my dagger twenty with the 20-foot rope? Sure, you could try. Ichabod, what do you do? Um, all I got is my dagger, too, so I'll run up and try the same thing. Alright, throw your dagger, sir. See what happens. Twenty-three to hit. Twenty-four to hit. Both of you stab your daggers into this baby goat. And with your specifically axis, you feel it tugging away. But with your general strength, you're just made. You're just able to like grip it hard and making sure it doesn't run away. And then at this point, it just collapses. It is just bleeding still, and it's just like yelling out these cries of like pain and suffering. I'm gonna pull it over, and then mercy kill it. So shut it up. You do so. I'm gonna grab my dagger and see if anything's coming to its aid. Make a perception check. You see nothing coming to this age, you just see the rest of its pack just abandoning it and its fear. Uh -oh. Because Axios is a fucking more demonic looking pinging and it's just running away. How All far right. away are they? Say again? How far away are they? They are too far away at this point. They are extremely fast. And they're used to more of the mountain, range, mountain hill range as a comparison. But you do have a baby goat, which will basically feed everyone for the night. Alright, I bring it on back. And then hand it to You bring it on back. Clean it on back to clean it. Alright, she cleans it. She comes out of visibility. Alright. As you are cooking... And as you are preparing for your meal, I want everyone to make a perception check. Uh, oh, that baby goat is going to be so delicious when it's cooked. Eleven. <laughs> Eight. I got a nineteen. Uh, nineteen. All right. Everyone but Ichabod clearly sees. That there's something flying overhead, and it's approaching you. What do you do? How far away is it? It is coming at you from 60 feet from the sky. Can I tell what it is with my perception check? You have dark vision, yes? Yes. It's weird. It's probably one of the most weirdest creatures you've ever seen, because this flying thing has wings of a bat, 
but its body and head is shaped like a lion, but it has a lot of serrated teeth, and it's heading towards you. I am... It's, I am... I'm just gonna ready my whole... I'm just gonna ready, like, as soon as it gets close, if it does start attacking, I'm gonna go and rage and attack back. Alright. At this point, as it comes to the rest of your guys' view, you could clearly see that flying nearby you is a grown manticore with a spiked tail now showing. And it snarls and growls like, Oh, fresh goats haven't had it for days. And freshly caught too. Mm. Give me the goats and I'll spare your lives. And you can see it's just drooling with its three, four rows of teeth. Anybody up for seconds? <laughs> I'm taking careful aim at the manticore's head since he can't see me. Watching sure. what the whole group is doing. Alright, what's the rest of you doing? I say that out loud. Alright. <sighs> yes, yeah, seconds. You would make good seconds. Spike tail attack against you. <laughs> See, 20. Yeah, that hits. 14 plus. What's your armor class? 14. Okay. It will definitely hit. You take. Hang on. You take that much. Seven points of piercing damage as three of his specs comes out from its tail and just jabs right into your right into your scales. It is at this point that we roll initiative. When did I get a surprise attack since I don't know where I'm at? You saw him attack. Would you like to do anything? Yeah, I'm shooting him. Attack roll with advantage. Roll by turn to attack if he was going to attack too. He is flying in the air 30 feet, by the way. He has not, like, come down and approach. Okay, fair enough. I got an, a 30 to hit. <laughs> that hits. <laughs> that hits a man's core. I do 13 points of damage, and I lose my invisibility. Oh, you see it growling in its pain now, seeing you. Spots his guts. You sneaky little petty human. You're, you, very dumb creature. <laughs> At this point, that combat will start. And uh, I got a nat 20 for initiative, so that's a 25. 25. I have rent. Alright. And Blue, what'd you roll for initiative? A whopping eight. Oof. Too focused on that goat, man. I'm hungry. Yeah, hey man, I would too. <laughs> um let's see here. Yeah. It rolled a fourteen. Did it roll initiative? I'm just double check. It rolled an eight, okay. Uh, 11 and a quarter. And we roll four, duh. For Anea. She rolled a nat 20. Plus her dex mod, a 21. <laughs> so, Koto, you're the first one to act. What do you do? Just gonna fill it full of arrows. Alright, attack roll, sir. I'm gonna roll for Amarin. Wow, five. Is an 18 hit? Yes. Nine points of damage. Yep. Ah! Oh! Is a 20 hit? Yes. <laughs> 12 points of damage. Key strike. Ah. It's in pain. 25 to hit. Mm-hmm. Can say shot. 
11. Okay. Plus, I got 15 points of damage on the last one. So, that was... 12, 15, and 9 points of damage. You, you are filling it with arrows. It goes, ah! Oh, oh, you are... Ugh, ugh. It looks Leave. pissed off now. Leave. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And Neo's turn, she's going to take a shot at it, seeing that Kodo's, like, nailing every single hit. She almost will crit, too. <laughs> Aw, damn it, Nea, almost. So she rolled a 15, which hits the Manticore. So it's a D6 plus one for damage. That dex modifier coming in. That plus one. Six damage. She shoots a shot. And she shoots it right at the chest of the Manticore. Ah! What? Mm. Little one. Mm. I do like them when they're young. And now it's targeting at the Nea. Uh, next, it is... Ichabod's turn. What would you like to do? Um, It's still up in the air, right? Yep, 30 feet, but barely flying. It's bloodied at this point. I have no ranged weapons. Well, my <laughs> dagger, but that's the... Um... Um, it's 30. Yeah, I was going to say, you do have a ranged one, but it's only 10 feet, not 30. No, it's 20 feet. Or 60. After no, I was talking about your your whip flail that you just got. That's a ten foot, but no, not thirty. Scourge is a flail. What are you doing, it about it? It's flying over. It's targeting Ananea. What are you doing? Uh, I'll try to throw my dagger with the disadvantage. All right, good luck. Two sevens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> For a total of plus seven would be fourteen. That just hits his armor class, so he'll take half damage from this attack. D four plus D four plus four. Six. All right, he'll take six points of damage. He'll take three because it just hits his armor class. You th he throw you throw the dagger. Ah! Anything else? Come down here, pretty. Let me give you a kiss. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Fine. It's his turn. You win. And he flies away. <laughs> so, with arrows and a right. dagger at him, he flies away defeated. With my Combat plus is... one dagger, the... I'm hunting it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can... I could take pop shots as it's leaving, right? <laughs> According to initiative, no. And it has a massive fly speed. So let me just see its fly I speed. I have quick. 600 feet range. Uh, let me just check its fly speed real quick. It has a fly speed of 50. So it flies 50 feet away. If you want, you can attempt to make a shot at it. So. Oh, yeah. Um, What is the rest of the party doing? You guys have spells you guys want to shoot? Yeah, I'm it's gonna run yeah. after it. Well, hang yeah. on, because at, at this point it's 80 feet away and it's flying upwards too. So yeah, hang on, because I've got guiding bolt, which is at 120 foot range. Nice. I was <laughs> gonna say guiding bolt, Aldridge blast. There's some good ones that yeah. have some nice range on them. Yeah, so so it's it... <laughs> at this point, Axius, <laughs> it is your turn. You just sit down and eat. <laughs> yeah, I literally have nothing. <laughs> It tastes really fucking good. <laughs> so, Blue, you're up. Guiding Bolt. That's a 19 on the die. That so, hits. 46. Shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, 46. I'm pretty sure it's radiant damage. If that makes a difference. I don't think it does. Yeah, radiant damage. So, 6, 9, 14. Shit. 17 points of damage, plus the next attack on it has advantage. It will not happen, because I'm going to ask you how you'd like to defeat this mana core. Uh, I take the quill that it threw at me and throw it back at it. Okay, you do so. And what does your guiding bolt look like? Uh, 
it uh, has a little trail of lightning going behind it, so it's kind of zigzagging through the air towards the manticore. Nice. And uh, there's a small little boom when it hits. All right. So you just pull out the spike out of you, and you toss it. It goes zigzag like a lightning bolt. Boom! Strikes it, and you guys hear him just go, oh, oh, no. And then you just see it go falling down forward, and it is down. I turn back to the group. Seconds, anybody? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get my dagger. <laughs> and I go with you. Yeah, I'm falling too. I'm going to collect some feathers, make some great arrows out of them. <laughs> also, and I would understand if you say no, um, I didn't realize that I got my deflect missile uh, reaction. <laughs> I don't suppose you'd let me do that. Nah, we can't go back at this point. Yeah. We, you killed it, though. That's fine. So, so you three are going towards it. I think the only one that has dark vision at this point is Ichabod, so Ichabod is leading the way. And you guys are trailing behind as it is pitch dark. And Ichabod, you go to the corpse. You see other humanoid looking individuals over there. And you do see what seems like to be a group of Aarakocras. Um, Are you guys approaching this stealthily or no? Yeah, I will. Okay. So Ichabod is doing stealthily. Are you two doing it? Or are you, are you? Yeah, I'll go stealth. All right, so make a stealth check for both of you with disadvantage because you guys are not cannot see your surroundings that well. Thirteen and nine is 22. disadvantage. I got an eighteen. Nice, Koda. You're getting used to the terrain slowly. What did you roll in your stealth check, uh, Ichabod? You you just make a regular stealth check because you see dark vision, so yeah. I rolled a 13, and I got a plus 9 in stealth. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, Blue? <laughs> so I stub my toe and then step <laughs> on a twig. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. All right. So, Ichabod, you clearly see what seems like to be a group of seven air cockras, and they all speak a com common, and they say... Oh, man, a manticore. Where did this come from? I don't know, but we haven't had any food for weeks. Well, good. well whatever happened, it's a miracle we could finally eat. At this point, Blue, as you approach Ichabod and Koto, who are being stealthy amongst like a high cliff range, you stub your toe and you fall and you give away your group's position. It goes, ah, who's it? who goes there? And they all point like their spears at you. Amongst those, group, we do see was two young Aarakocras and two, two, excuse me, three female ones with the rest being male and the males are pointing spears. So he says, hey, back off. Get, we, we don't want any gentlemen, trouble. We, gentlemen, gentlemen. I'm, what is a gentleman? We're birds. All right. Uh, Blue Jays. <laughs> We're Aarakocras, thank you very much. You see all bird now, I'm kidding. We have <laughs> um, never seen anything like you before and I just Start walking over to pull my dagger out of the thing and put it in a sheath. Okay. I want feathers. Oh, oh, oh. okay. All right. I'll introduce you... myself. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I am Mikabod Iron Eyes of the Clan Iron Eyes, eighth generation blacksmith out of Iron Hill. Nice to meet you. I'm Fang. E-N-G for the players. I'm Fang. Fang. Um, these are my people. We're, well, best of our knowledge, the last of our kind, and we don't want any trouble. We just need some food. We haven't been eating in quite some time. Obviously, down spears, or I start with kids first. They get very defensive at this point. Blue Ichabod, would you like to do anything? I'm like, sure, you can Set off a haunt you take back for ourselves. We just came to retrieve the dagger and get some feathers is all. All three of you make perception persuasion checks with Kodos being at disadvantage. 
<laughs> I got a disadvantage actually, to a zero. Awesome. Actually, my apologies. Make an intimidation check because you are intimidating them. My apologies. Oh yeah. Because you are threatening them. So make, it a, make an intimidation check. Everyone make persuasion checks. A 15. Okay. Not uh, a disadvantage, Kota. Just regular intimidation. So we'll just take the first result. So 15 for Kodo. What'd you roll for persuasion? Uh, as I say that, I bite my tongue and it starts bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> and what'd you roll Ichabod for persuasion? A 15. A 14 plus 1. Alright, so both of you roll 15. So we roll to see whether they are friendly or not, because Kodo's threatening them. Ichabod is persuading them, and apparently Blue bit his tongue. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I rolled a one, and I have a minus one, so zero. Luckily enough, by three, the Aarakocras are fun, friendly towards you. They're like, all right, grab your weapons and grab whatever feathers and stuff you can find, but we got to take majority of this. We got children that haven't eaten in two days. So you guys I don't retrieve. care. By chance, you have a cleric among you. No, we don't, unfortunately. Our cleric has been long gone ever since the start of this. We thought we would be safe from the mountaintops, but for some reason, the undead were able to make it up top. And we tried to fly away, but they got with most of our younglings. All right, I wish them well and start heading back. Got right. a 23 in survival to collect feathers? Yeah, you could collect a bunch of feathers from this massacre. About how much? Mm, we'll say a pound of feathers. Of oh, teeth. A pound? Yeah, there's a lot of feathers on this massacre. It mm. seems like that these that this massacre is probably getting into his elder years, which is probably why there's so much. So, about how many arrows would that make? How many arrows do you have? I only have 49 right now. I don't have any other ingredients to make the arrows, but I know how to make arrows if I can get the stuff. I'm just looking at how many feathers I have here and the okay, quality of second. feathers. Okay, one second here. Okay. One second here, just like the thing, and then... You have 21. Not All right. to make 21. Arrows? Yes. Arrows? Yep. Alrighty. Enea, Axius, and Amran are all enjoying a meal. After quite some time, you see Ichabod, Blue, and Koto, come back. Did you guys take any meat, by the way? You didn't clarify specifically. No. No. Okay. So, Axius, Aaron, Axius, you see them come back empty-handed. For seconds. I cut the, 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 its hind leg off a haunch. That is right. Ichabod did say he wanted a haunch. And you do. But I mean, there's four more. haunches on a manticore, so. Hey, but actually, they come back empty handed with no food. And they promise seconds. I mean, Nickabout has a haunch. It's a big <laughs> piece of meat. Did I freeze up? You guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. I can hear you just yeah, fine. You. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I. Took out my sword and cut cut a haunch off for ourselves and let them take the rest. Who's them? Strange bird people. You ever not good hear... feathers. Have you guys ever heard of a aracocra? <laughs> Okra? <laughs> no, not really. If you guys want, you can make history checks to see what an air cocker is. Huh. Natural 20. Ha! <laughs> Rolled of one. 
I don't know what did about Eric Conkrat. <laughs> they were half so starved. Their wings did not look good. <laughs> Aaron and and they are both rolled a seven. Um, they have no clue what Eric Conkrat is. Axius, you've actually combated one Eric Conkrat during your times as a gladiator. They're really good aerial fighters, but through luck and sheer determination and strategy, you were able to take one down in combat based on your background. They are ferocious aerial fighters. That's what you know about them, based on your background and such. Are you guys outnumbered? Is that why you gave up the meat? Yeah, something like that. They were starving. Who knows, maybe one day the they'll world. come to our aid. I highly doubt it. Well, come to my aid, not you. You were a dickhead to him. I was being truthful. Or I'll say some dirty word in Orbish. <laughs> Whatever. Just let's start cooking. Let's eat. I'm hungry again. <laughs> I'm hungry again. <laughs> All right. You guys eat your meals. Use your hunch. And you guys take shifts. What order of shifts would you guys like to take? Actually, what I want to do is I want to sit down cross-legged, cast Summon Steed, Find Steed again, uh -huh. um, to find my um, demonic elk, and then telepathically tell it to watch over us as we sleep through the night. Okay. All of a sudden, this weird demonic elk just comes from a portal of hell, from the fire campfire itself and it just randomly jumps like <laughs> and scares the shit out of Anea and catches everyone by surprise. As far as Blue and Koto, this is the first time you're seeing this weird demonic elk looking thing. And you can tell Axios is communicating it in some weird way. This is def mm. definitely otherworldly. <clears throat> and Anea goes, what the hell is that? This is a friend who can watch over us while we sleep. She just friend. looks at this demonic looking elk with like razor sharp teeth and demonic twisted horns with claws instead of just, you know, hooves. She just goes, um, are you sure? She looks concerned. <laughs> yes, this is my steed. And I telepathically tell it an inferno. Watch over us while we sleep and alert me telepathically if anyone, sh if anything may appear. <sighs> it says to you, yes, of course, an infernal. We're good. Has now. a whole lot of nope. <laughs> <laughs> actually, what I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to sit down um, and do this for the first time. I'm going to touch my elk and I'm going to cast Beast Sense. And then my okay. body's just gonna go limp as I just start seeing what the elk sees. What does B sense do? Uh B sense, B sense, B sense. Give me one. Second. It's like the first time I've ever heard of this spell. <laughs> Basically he can see and hear through his companions senses. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I can hear what it hears and sees what it sees through its eyes. Okay. But my body is essentially just comatose for that hour. Sure. All right, you guys take a rest while this weird demonic-looking elk watches over you. If you want to use any like healing abilities before you rest to heal yourself, now's a good time to do it. Otherwise, you guys rest. Take a long rest. I I pull a nay over by me. Sure. Stay up for two hours, then wake my ass up. All right. <laughs> sure. All right. The so next day. Um, yes. Nothing. Go ahead. No, you want to do something beforehand? Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to attempt to camouflage myself away from the group, away from the burning elk of doom, and <laughs> go on my bedroll and sleep. Okay. I got a nat 20 for camouflage. <laughs> yeah. You are camouflaged. For the most part, best you're yeah. not in these weird foothills and such, but enough for you to know that you're safe, especially when there's a demonic looking elk around, too. 
I'm hiding from the demonic elf. <laughs> Blue's just laying there in his bedroll, kind of like you see in those scenes in the movies where their back is to the creature, but they're wide awake. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I mean, I've known these people for 22 hours now. <laughs> and they got right. demonic elks coming out of the fires. All right. So, time-wise, it is... Early, it is late at night at this point, with eight hours. You regain half your hit dice, half your spell slots, and whatnot. And you guys are fully rested. You just spelled a demonic elk, I presume. Or would you like to keep uh, it? Oh, I, I can, I can, I can keep it with me, so I'm keeping it with me. Okay, it sticks around. <laughs> yeah, I can either summon it back, or it's hit. It could just be reduced by its weak ass hit die. <laughs> All right. So, you guys rest, you gather your things, and this weird demonic looking elk is still around. <laughs> what do you do? Let's go, guys. And I hop mm -hmm. on my steed. Alright, you hop on your demonic elk. Your wife rides with you. And we're just gonna ride out ahead, just about like 15 feet ahead of the group, just to. Scott okay. Okay. Alright. I we're laugh that they're they're quote unquote scouting and I say <laughs> fifty feet below behind the group. Sure. Everyone roll a D six. And I lose another no. max hit point, right? Yep, you lose another max hit point. Four. Four. Five. Four. One. Five. One. Four, five, one. Two fours. Three. <laughs> Nothing bad oh, happens on the way there. One from five is four, so. All right. So, you guys make your way to the Dawn Pass. You go climb over the various hill terrain around the vicinity. And for the Dawn Pass, I would like everyone to make a history check. I get advantage on this. Um. Yes, because you're local. Fifteen. Okay. And Eleven. Yep. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Uh, this is something we passed through at dawn, right? <laughs> <laughs> Best of your knowledge. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, twice oh. is good. I rolled a two. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so you guys, for the most part, know that the Dawn Pass is mainly called the Dawn Pass because of its namesake. You get, it's the best place to see Dawn rise and fall. And it serves as like a highway of sorts for trade routes back before the zombie apocalypse would happen. It would be this in-between between Parnast and Lork. And it would basically serve as an in between for the for the high forest and the desert of Ankara. This would basically be the quote unquote bridge connecting the two. That being said, the trade routes up the mountains can be quite dangerous. And we'll see what happens next week as you continue your journey. Aww. So till then next week, guys. Hope everyone has had a good week. Shout outs first. If you guys are interested in joining the pod into joining this group, you must be part of the Pocket Dimension Discord in the description. You could join. Not only is it a group to possibly join the Dead Realms campaign, but you can also join a massive community for all D D players, not just in Dungeons and Dragons, but also in Pathfinder and Call of Cthulhu. Also Give a special shout out to Lady K Does Art. You can find our Instagram under that same name who does the logo and does the background art. And for me personally, we got some upcoming news as far as merch details. Can't share that with you yet, but expect it soon. So until then, guys, we'll see what happens in the mountain ranges next week. Take care. Yay. Have a good night. <laughs> good night. We good, Yudel?
I'm assuming so. I'm gonna stop the music. All right, guys, that was a wild, crazy ride. <laughs> I believe I have found my die because it rolls like shit in RP, but it rolls pretty damn decent in combat. That's all that matters. <laughs> It's all that matters in the end. I rolled a one for the stealth, a one for the persuasion, and then a two on the era coker check, and then the two on the dawn pass. <laughs> Beautiful. I am bringing out the purple snitch next week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I got to get going a bit. I got work early in the morning, boys. All right. I hope you guys enjoy the game. I appreciate you coming. And next week, we'll continue our, the journey to the Den Realms with episode 15. I was honestly expecting to die tonight. <laughs> I was I expecting expected. you to die too. <laughs> you guys were co-opted I was, and went I was together. so frustrated that I couldn't get over there, and he's he wasn't explaining the wall right. I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna yeah. die before I can. Yeah, I was trying arrow. to find like I was trying to find ah. a map that was like perfectly trying to find, but that was the closest thing I could find to like was, an actual church. So I was getting so frustrated. There's like eight drow and a squid monster from hell. I'm like, how did I get in there and shoot arrows? Harry's gonna die. Wizard's gonna be mad at me. I find it odd that the minus one strength wizard beat that sea creature. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. I gotta get to bed, boys. I'll see you all, all right. next week. All right. Take care. Have a good night. Later, Thanks guys. For the good night. Later, guys. See you next week. Take care.